Fantasy sports fans, does it strike you as odd that the popularity of fantasy sports continues to grow, but the game itself never seems to change? Drafting players to be a part of your fantasy team is cool, but are you looking for something new? If you're a sports fan and you actively look for new ways to have fun and compete while watching sports, you gotta check out StatementGames.com. That's StatementGames.com. Statement Games is a new, simple, yet innovative form of sports gaming that is changing the way thousands of fans view sporting events. With Statement Games, you select player and game props or statements to compete in tournaments for prizes. Sign up for free using your Google or Facebook account. No credit card or debit card information is required. Try StatementGames.com today and watch how we take fantasy sports to the next level. StatementGames.com. That's StatementGames.com. Edward Lehman has been a trusted insurance advisor for over 16 years with insurance solutions for auto, home, commercial, life, and retirement. He's located at 54 Sunnyside Boulevard, Suite H in Plainview. That's just 1,000 feet south of 495. Local agent, local advice. The time to think about insurance is before you need it. So do yourself a favor and before you pay your next insurance bill, give Ed and his team a call. 516-935-3900 or visit them online at www.allstate.com forward slash EL. Edward H. Lehman Insurance is your trusted insurance advisor. Do current market conditions have you nervous? Our experienced team of financial professionals at Heritage Harbor Financial Associates understands that no two investors are alike. We all have different goals, needs, and appetites for risk. That's why the one-size-fits-all approach does not work, especially when planning for retirement. At Heritage Harbor Financial Associates, we analyze your unique investment style so that you can work toward your individual retirement goals on your terms. Heritage Harbor Financial Associates can help you take steps to reach your retirement goals by providing a wide array of financial financial products to fit your needs, even for the risk adverse. Give us a call at 631-331-6599 to learn more or to set up an appointment with one of our financial professionals. You can also find us on the web at hhfa.org or on Facebook at facebook.com slash hhfa.org. Our number again is 631-331-6599. That's 631-331-6599. Investments in stocks, bonds, and mutual funds and variable annuities are not FDIC insured and are subject to fluctuation in value market risk, including loss of principal Heritage Harbor Financial Associates, offer securities through AXA Advisors, LLC, New York, New York, member FINRA, SIPC, annuity and insurance products offered through AXA Network, LLC. Take a look under your bed. Find stuff under there? What about jobs? No? Now try your basement. There's a pair of overalls that overall you're not so into anymore. A perfectly good laptop that hasn't sat in your lap in months. And even more stuff, but still no jobs? Well, you really have both. See, stuff is defined as household articles considered as a group. Sometimes this stuff is no longer needed. Wait, no longer needed? That can't be right. Because remember those jobs you were looking for? Those are really needed, and they're the stuff inside your stuff even inside that winter coat that moved with you to Phoenix. Our job is to unlock those jobs, and it starts when you donate your stuff to your local Goodwill. Here's how we do it. When you donate to Goodwill, we sell your stuff to provide job training for people right here in your community. So just by teaming up with Goodwill, you help create jobs. And isn't that worth parting with the leftover key tar from your 80s cover band? Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. Find your nearest donation center at Goodwill.org. A message from Goodwill and the Ad Council. Dear John, I was hoping it wouldn't come to this, but you've left me no choice. I'm leaving. Uncontrolled high blood pressure is really serious, and lately you seem to really not care. I've been there for you since day one, and I know you think I'm going to keep ticking. But no, my friend, I can quit whenever I want. Why can't we get back to the good times, when we were more active and ate more healthy foods, and you checked on me every once in a while? Is that too much to ask? I don't want to leave. But unless you stop ignoring me, what else am I supposed to do? Remember, when I quit, you quit. Sincerely, your heart. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Doing the minimum to control your high blood pressure isn't doing enough. High blood pressure can lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get your blood pressure to a healthy range before it's too late. Find out how at heart.org slash blood pressure. Check. Change. Control. A message from the American Heart Association, the American Stroke Association, and the Ad Council. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Jason Derulo. I love that music connects to people all over the country. But unfortunately, so does something else. Childhood hunger. 
15 million kids struggle with hunger right here in America. And yet, every year, billions of pounds of surplus food in the U.S. go to waste instead of going to the children in need. Feeding America is working to change this. The Feeding America nationwide network of food banks rescues this surplus of food to help provide meals to families in virtually every community in the United States, including yours. But they just can't do this alone. Join me in the fight against hunger in America. For more information on what you can do to get involved, visit feedingamerica.org. That's feedingamerica.org. Together we can solve hunger. Together, we're feeding America. A message from Feeding America and the Ad Council. (laughs) Hey, everyone. You know, let's all stop what we're doing right now and take a moment. That felt good, huh? Just like that, we had a nice, special sort of moment. Together. Of course, they don't all need to be quiet moments to be special. They could be loud moments, goofy moments, sporty moments, dorky moments. Moments where we talk or walk or just hang out. It doesn't really matter. They all count. Because every time dads like us take a moment like that to spend with our kids, well... It's pretty momentous. (laughs) Sounds like somebody agrees. So let's take a moment to make a moment. Today, call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Music is a bridge between the material and the spiritual. My name is Harvey Lauer, and I'm 82. As a blind person, you have to be aware that nobody can tell you what you can or can't do. You really have to try things. My folks got me a little radio in 1940, and that was the best Christmas present I ever got. When I was 11 years old is when I started to uh, play music, play the piano, and then the accordion, and then the cello. My wife, who was also blind, was a good cook. When she died, that's when I started Meals on Wheels. America, let's do lunch. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer for Meals on Wheels by donating your lunch to letsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. Be fearless at MMA Long Island and Seituha Karate. Located at 28 Cold Court in Ronkonkoma, MMA Long Island is the martial arts school for you if you want to learn combat-proven techniques. Build confidence, discipline, and self-esteem while learning real martial arts to fight back against bullies, predators, and peer pressure. MMA Long Island offers group and private lessons for all ages and levels in traditional Goji-Ru Karate, MMA, and self-defense. MMA Long Island is one of Long Island's most affordable martial arts schools. There are no promotion, belt, or membership fees, and family discounts are available. All classes are taught by 7th degree black belt Sensei John Benedict with over 30 years teaching experience. So whether you want to get in the ring or protect yourself and your family, MMA Long Island can help you reach your goals. Visit MMALongIsland.com. That's MMALongIsland.com or call or text 516-381-9660. That's 516-381-9660. You're, you're, you're listening to the World Wide Sports Radio Network. Great moments are born from great opportunity. And that's what you have here. That's what you've earned here tonight. Forget about the crowds, the size of the school, their fancy uniforms, and remember what got you here. If you put your effort and concentration into playing to your potential to be the best that you can be, I don't care what the scoreboard says, at the end of the game, in my book, we're going to be winners. On this team, we tear ourselves and everyone else around us to pieces for that inch. We claw with our fingernails for that inch because we know when we add up all those inches, that, that, that's going to make the f-ing difference between winning and losing. It's down to the wire with, with, with Errol Marks and Speedy Petey. Oh, Petey! Oh, Petey! On the World Wide Sports Radio Network. And we... Our back, ladies and gentlemen, this is Down to the Wire. I'm your host, Errol Marks, my co-host, the great 
and big pain in the ass, Speedy Beatty. As you know, you can follow us and call us at 631-971-8070. You can also follow us by going to our website at WorldWideSportsRadio.com and search us on all the social media platforms by going to Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and obviously YouTube. And we're on every single digital platform around the country, including Radio.com, TuneIn Radio, and iHeartRadio. So definitely check us out on all the social medias. You can watch us, you can listen to us, and you can find us on every single platform. Mr. Speedy Petey. How was your weekend, my friends? Uh, I think they were like everyone else's. They're just trying to get through this stretch of just staying at home. <laughs> well, that's because you're a boring person, Speedy. That's the only reason why you stay at home, because you have nothing else better to do. You like to twiddle your thumbs and do other things, like possibly sell vibrators, right? No. Well, you I said did. that if I it came down to it. I did not sell a vibrator. It, but you did say that if you had the opportunity, you if, would sell one. If I possessed one for whatever reason. How do reason. you know you don't possess one right now as we speak? I don't. How do you know? Because I don't have any online shopping, and I know I don't have one well, besides that. Well, hold on one second. You don't need online shopping to get yourself a vibrator. You know that, right? Yeah, but I, I didn't formally shop for one in person, so. Well, we don't know that for sure. Maybe you don't So even... the only thing is if somebody hacked my bank account and put one in there, I don't know. <laughs> so you're you're thinking that somebody's going to hack your bank, bank account and then send you a vibrator. No, I said it. that would be the only possibility of me having one in the first place. Wait, what? so <laughs> hold on one second. So you would have to check your bank account to know that either you have a vibrator or don't have a vibrator. Is yeah, that what you're saying? I don't have online But how shopping. do you know somebody wasn't going to give it to you for free? So you can try one. Because they and didn't. Because <laughs> nobody did. Well, for your information, somebody actually sent us a vibrator. And I'm going to give it to you after the show, and oh, you can God. check it out and see if you can sell it in the future. What do you think about that? Oh, God. What's so good about that? She just said, quote, unquote, you would probably sell them, right? Is that what you said? Yes, at the right price. At the, at the right price of what? You're making money by selling it. Yes, I know. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are going to have a special guest at 620. Probably in about, I would say, about 10 minutes. We're going to have Perry Williams. If you guys don't know him, he is a two-time Super Bowl champion with the New York Giants from the 84 and 91 season. I think he played from 84 to 91 with the New York Giants. 84 to 93. 93 with the New York Giants. Uh, He's he the number one corner on the 87 team. And he's a two-time Super Bowl champion. He did play under Bill Belichick. And Mr. Bill Parcell. So we will get into what his thoughts were with uh, Bill Belichick and Bill Parcells, playing with Lawrence Taylor, playing with uh, Carl Banks, and some of the great players that we saw over the years with the New York Giants. But I do want to get into free agency in football before we get to that. And I know the Giants signed running back from the Pats, Lewis, who uh, he's a practice squad guy. He, he barely played last year. Right. He wasn't a guy that really played for the Giants. And, and the Giants are making... Small moves now. They're not making big moves. I know Jadavian Clowney was a big name on their radar, but it seems like They'll he's getting... they to pay a little extra for them to get him. <laughs> yeah, he, he's he's asking. His price is is pretty between... It's pretty much between 20 and $21 million. That's what he wants. He wants to be mm-hmm. one of the highest paid pass rushers in football, even though in his numbers and what you've seen in his numbers are not what you call elite numbers for a defensive lineman that you pay. Yeah, and with the Giants' circumstance, they're going to have to outbid two teams that were playoff teams last year. It seems like the most likely candidates now are either the Titans or the Seahawks, going back to the Seahawks. And Rivera making a move again. He brings in his ex-quarterback, who took over for Cam Newton last year, Kyle Allen. I think this is a good move for for somebody like the Redskins, because the Redskins right now, they bring in... Um, who did they bring in, the Redskins? Besides Kyle Allen, I think they brought in somebody else. Not a quarterback. They haven't brought anybody. I don't think they brought in a quarterback. Well, they have Haskins there, so they, they don't need to. So they have Haskins over there as their starter and Kyle Allen as their backup. I, I do believe that if a particular quarterback does fall to them in the first round, I could see the Redskins making a move and bringing in a quarterback. Now, I do believe that Haskins had a very good second half last year when he mm-hmm. came in, and he played a little bit better as the team started figuring things out and the players started figuring out the quarterback on where he likes to throw the ball, where he likes to deliver the ball, his delivering point. I mean, that's 
these are important you know, statistics that you watch when a quarterback plays, especially when it takes a young quarterback to figure things out on a football field. But I thought Dwayne Haskins played very, very well in the second half last season. Uh, he played better than a lot of these young quarterbacks that we've seen in the last couple of years come into the league. Uh, Josh Allen kind of fell apart in the second half this season. He played very well in the first half, and he kind of fell off a little bit in the second half. And he fell off in the playoffs as well. Even though he made some fabulous throws in the first half of the playoffs, he fell apart in the second half and and then obviously lost in the overtime. But uh, there are quarterbacks that did not look very, very good in their sophomore year, and we all know Baker Mayfield (laughs) did not look good. Uh, Lamar Jackson was the the MVP, and, and what he, we saw last year was a development that we didn't expect from a quarterback. And I, again, Kyle Allen, who took over for Cam Newton, played very, very well as a backup quarterback. And who could, who could be the future, start, future starting quarterback for the Redskins if Haskins does not provide what they think he's going to provide this coming season? That'll be tough, though, because the Redskins, outside of Terry McLaurin, really have nothing when it comes to offensive talent. <laughs> So they, you're not going to be able to rely on Christian McCaffrey like you did in Carolina. We have talked about for the we have talked uh, about the Cowboys a lot. <laughs> you don't and, say. And I'll tell you this right now: the Cowboys are making significant moves. Now I I am not a big fan of the Mari Cooper move, the hundred million dollar, especially when you look at Amari Cooper. He's not a top three, top four wide receiver in this league, and that he shouldn't have been paid for that. But. They're adding big, big players right now for less money. Right now, they brought in HaHa Clinton Dix for four million dollars. That was a good move for Very their secondary. Move, yeah. And now they're bringing in it looks like uh, Mr. Defensive Tackle Poe, who is a, a good defensive tackle who can mm-hmm. clog up the middle and do a lot of things over there. They're going to bring him for cheap too. So that's nice because their run defense was ranked, I think, twenty second last year. So bringing in Poe. Uh, as a backup, possibly starter uh, for this season for the Cowboys, adds to that defensive line, a big defensive line that has played well as far as pass rushing is concerned, but they couldn't stop the run. So I'm very intrigued to see if this move goes down. And if it does go down, slowly but surely you see the Cowboys getting better. Now, I'm not a big... They still need corners, though. (laughs) I'm still not a big big fan of McCarthy because I don't think this offense fits McCarthy's style of game. But... Again, we we all have to see the product when it's on the field. We I'm sure don't Mike McCarthy has leverage, though, in the reason they brought back Amari Cooper for $20 million a year, though. I'm sure he was, but that that's just because they don't have any weapons on the outside, and they need a weapon on the outside as good as Amari Cooper, even though I, just, I do not think he's a number one. I think he's a, a really, really, really good number two. But again, the Cowboys are making significant moves. Moves that you wouldn't expect from this team and this organization because over the years they couldn't land these players because they were too expensive to bring in. Now there are affordable guys that you can put there in those positions. So I, I like what I see so far with the Dallas Cowboys. As far as the New England Patriots, it's been a bad about a week and a half for the New England Patriots and the New England Patriot fans. And here's the reason why. They're bringing in Hoyer as possibly <laughs> the starting quarterback. Brian Hoyer, who... Has a background with uh, the New England Patriots and Bill Belichick's offense. No question that he has been. Uh, He's had a pretty decent backup NFL career. He's been a good quarterback. Not a quality quarterback, but a good quarterback. The best quarterback the Browns have had in recent memory. (laughs) But the Patriots lost arguably one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play the game to free agency. And now they're going to be really pulling up their uh, boxers or their briefs trying to figure out where they're going. Now, Stidham is not the guy, I think, for the future as far as the quarterback position is concerned with Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots. I do believe that they are going to bring in a veteran, maybe even not Hoyer. They'll bring in Hoyer right now, but maybe... Yeah, they'll oh, carry three quarterbacks or put Stidham on the practice squad then? As far as I'm concerned, in the offseason, they can bring in as many quarterbacks as they want. Four, five, six. It doesn't matter. One way or another, it's going to be cut down to two. And I do believe that the Patriots... If, if for the right price and for the right offer, maybe Jameis Winston would be a guy that they could look at and bring in right now. Jameis Winston, who is a free agent now, uh, a quarterback that maybe needs some guidance. This is a guy that was an elite, elite quarterback coming out of the draft, people thought. They thought he was going to be a superstar quarterback who really hasn't changed his style of game since he's come into the league. And, and you thought bringing in a coach 
of that magnitude to the Buccaneers last year, who is an offensive-minded guy, Bruce Arians, who knows the game, the speed of the game, and everybody thought could have helped Jameis Winston, just didn't help him. And <laughs> I think threw 30 interceptions. <laughs> yeah, but he threw, he threw 5,000 yards and 30 touchdowns. So he, sure, didn't have, he also had the biggest help with receivers and tight ends in the world, too. So. And we'll see how good Brady is with, with a bad offensive line and right. all those weapons, too, because... Right. I, I think Brady is going to be under a lot of stress and a lot of pressure, knowing that he's going to a team that everybody expects to win now, not later, for a 43-year-old quarterback. In a tough division and a tough conference. Yes. So. so we will see what happens with Tom Brady. But it's been a bad, nasty week for the New England Patriots. It really has. And you can say whatever you want as a New England Patriot fan. I, we won six Super Bowls. We've been to how many Super Bowls in the last past 20 years? That is fine and grand. You can tell that to anybody actually gives a crap. Nobody cares right now where the Tom Brady is or where the New England Patriots are going to be this year. Now, the question is, what are we going to see from the New England Patriots in the AFC East that is a lot better this year? The Jets will be a lot better. Buffalo will be a lot better. And even the Miami Dolphins will be a lot better in this division this year. Now, I don't think they're going to be superstar teams. I think Buffalo could be at 11-5, 10-16 this year. I think the Jets, if... If everything falls right with the schedule that they have, they can win 10, maybe even 11 games this year in that division as well because the division, the division now is open. Yeah, and it's not going to be the same cakewalk either head-to-head -head either for the Patriots. No. They used to be able to strive on sweeping the Bills, sweeping the Jets, and Miami would sometimes give them trouble in Miami, but that was really it. They usually just coast through the division easily. Now they're not going to be able to do that anymore either, especially Buffalo who played them tough last year too. It's going to be really, really fun to watch if there is a season this year. I do believe there will be a season, but uh, with this coronavirus and everything that's going on, not only here in Long Island, but throughout the country, I want to give a shout out to all the fans and all the people out there that are dealing with this epidemic, which has been horrific, not only for us here in New York, but throughout the country, throughout the world, the people that have passed away in Italy, uh, the people that have passed away in China, all the innocent people that have died from this um, epidemic disease and, and virus has been uh, really affecting what's going on in sports, what's going on with our radio network. It's, it's, it's been really, really hard. And, and to me, I think a lot of the fans, I, you have to give them a lot of credit and a lot of um, looking forward to the future where sports is going because of the fans. Because mm -hmm. I think without the fans, the sports world wouldn't be where it is today, and I think it's on top in every single majority voting right. when it comes to music, entertainment, and now you talk about sports. But uh, it's been a business that has been absolutely taking to higher heights, and I, I do believe that when you look at the fans and the understanding of where the fans have been and what the fans have done over the last couple of years – has been absolutely remarkable for what the NFL, the NHL, the NBA, and the major leagues have done in the last couple of weeks, and really protecting the fans, even though I think there are other ways to doing it. But um, we are going to go to a quick. We're going to go to a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to come back with Perry Williams. Yes, ex uh, ex Super Bowl champion, two time Super Bowl champion with the New York Giants, and. Uh, now, an important speaker throughout the country and throughout the world. So, when we come back, Perry Williams here on Down to the Wire. It, it, it is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Attention, fantasy sports fans. Does it strike you as odd that the popularity of fantasy sports continues to grow, but the game itself never seems to change? Drafting players to be a part of your fantasy team is cool, but are you looking for something new? If you're a sports fan and you actively look for new ways to have fun and compete while watching sports, you gotta check out StatementGames.com. That's StatementGames.com. Statement Games is a new, simple, yet innovative form of sports gaming that is changing the way thousands of fans view sporting events. With Statement Games, you select player and game props or statements to compete in tournaments for prizes. Sign up for free using your Google or Facebook account. No credit card or debit card information is required. Try StatementGames.com today and watch how we take fantasy sports to the next level. StatementGames.com. That's StatementGames.com. Ranger Station, Ranger speaking. 
Hi, um, I'd like to report a bear hug. Uh huh. Okay. Well, we were building a bonfire, and I, I saw some like dry brush and leaves around. So, you know, I, I said to move the bonfire somewhere else, and out of nowhere, Smoky Bear shows up and hugs me. So you noticed some wildfire hazards and moved your bonfire to a safer location. Yeah. Yeah, that's Smoky, all right. He likes it when people help prevent wildfires. It hits him close to home. Not everybody gets the hug, my friend. So that's pretty special to get a hug from Smoky Bear. Ha! Huh, so it was him. Hey, guys, I told you it was Smoky. Okay. Well, congratulations, my friend, and thanks for calling. There are many ways to prevent a wildfire. Learn how you can do your part at SmokyBear.com. Only you can prevent wildfires. Sponsored by the U.S. Forest Service, Ad Council, and your state forester. Hope you enjoyed your meal. And I just want to say, he's lucky to have a brother like you. Lucky? Caring for my brother is far from easy. Waking up every day, lifting him from the bed to the wheelchair to the car to get him to therapy on time. It's no small task between the doctors and the diagnosis, but nothing can disable this love. This is my big brother, my hero. He's part of me, like my arms and legs. So I'll be his. <laughs> See, there's no time for tired. This starts again tomorrow. He'll be waiting for me. I wake up for him. I know he needs me, but I'm the lucky one. Even though I need help now and then. If you're caring for a loved one, visit aarp.org/caregiving for care guides and community, or call 877-333-5885. Caregiving Resource Center. Support for your strength. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. different face and posting on their feed they're super ugly the things they say to them online are cruel and they're not true so tell your friend i'll stand up for you don't worry i know what to do tell the world i see Know someone who's being bullied online? Send the witness emoji. It looks like an eye in a speech bubble, and it's in the symbol section near the clocks in your phone. You'll let the world know it isn't cool, and you'll let your friend know you care. Learn more about the witness emoji at eyewitnessbullying.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. It is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Six three one nine six five four nine nine zero is the number. As you know, this is down to the wire. We are live every single Monday and Tuesday from six p.m. to eight p.m. Eastern time. And as you guys know, we told you we we're going to have a special guest on the phone, and we have him on the phone, Mr. Perry Williams. And if you guys don't know who Perry Williams is, two-time Super Bowl champion who play who played eleven seasons with the New York Giants during his play. Playing days, Williams continued his education to obtain his graduate uh, degree in public administration. He accomplished this before the days and distances learning. Williams has spoken to over 3 million schools and ages of students from kindergarten and high school. He has also done workshops and seminars for executives, managers, and staff and employees. Williams has a distinction of being the only athlete to be a keynote speaker at the Pentagon. He addressed 350 special intelligent officers. Currently, Williams is the director of sports management of Long Island University. What's going on, Mr. Williams? I think it's good. Thank you for having me on. I mean, I'm very excited to be here and a uh, pleasure uh, to be on today and uh, looking forward to talking with you guys. Absolutely. Well, my first question to you it was, what was it like playing under Bill Parcells in the 80s and the early 90s? <laughs> well, that was a great experience. Playing for the big tuna, Bill Parcells, a great great coach. Obviously, he's a Hall of Famer. Um, I'm happy for him that he made that several years ago. Um, it was just a unique type of individual. 
they had a lot of great people around him um, supporting Cash. So uh, it wasn't that much hard for him, but at the same token, uh, he, he worked very hard and uh, got the guys ready to go, and we had a lot of success together. Perry, wh- what are some of the things about guys like Lawrence Taylor and Harry Carson that people – might not know about as fans, as analysts, what were some of the things that you saw in practices and games that a lot of people wouldn't know about those two guys? Well, first and foremost, they were great players. Both of them are Hall of Famers, as you all know. Uh, the guys um, just went out there and played. It uh, was unique with us, uh, with those two particular guys. There was, um, you know, team players. It was about teamwork. It was about playing together, playing as a team, as a group. And it's one of the main reasons we had a lot of success in the 80s and in the 90s. Um, just guys like that uh, were superstars, but they understood that everybody had a role and everybody worked cohesively together. If we uh, we win together, that's a great thing. We didn't want to lose, so we tried to win. So the old adage is uh, teamwork makes the dream work. So uh, our dream became a reality because we worked as a team. So everything worked out good with those guys as well as the rest of the guys. We are speaking to ex-two-time Super Bowl champion, ex-New York Giant, Perry Williams. Perry, what are your thoughts of Bill Belichick? The, the, everything that he's done as a head coach in the NFL, you worked under him. Uh, he was your defensive coordinator for all those years with the New York Giants. What were your thoughts to being a six-time Super Bowl champion and all the success he's had with the Patriots? Did you ever think that this guy was going to be as successful as he is today? I'm not that surprised. I saw traits of it early on back in 1983, my first year uh, when I got drafted by the Giants. And by 84, I could see it materializing that this guy was something special about him. I had the privilege and honor to be with him for eight years, my first eight years in the league. And I knew he was going to do something special. I didn't know he was going to do that special like that in New England. He's a legend up there. and It's not only in the New York metropolitan area, but he's definitely a legend up in the New England area. So, um, I'm happy for him, and he's still going to do some great things. Uh, obviously, I understand now that it, his main guy, uh, Brady, is gone, but uh, I'm sure, sure he'll still do well. Uh, Bill was a, uh, a studious guy. He was like a mad scientist. If it's the first thing as a genius of football, then Bill Belichick is one of those guys. I am sure he's surely going in the Hall of Fame without a shadow of a doubt when that time comes. But um, it was just an honor and a pleasure to be able to work with him, and uh, I'm very happy for him and all his success. When you look at the New York Giants now as an organization, and all these years, and you were a part of the organization for the two-time Super Bowl champions of the 80s and the 90s, and then you see all the, the great teams that we've seen in 2007 and 2011, all the trials and tribulations that they had to go through to win the other two Super Bowls, what Eli had to go through. Being a, a, a person that's sitting on the sidelines and now watching watching the growth of some of these players like Eli Manning, who just retired, what would you tell Eli now that his career is over as a, a future Hall of Famer that will be probably inducted into the Hall of Fame in the next five or f- five or six years? Well, I'll tell you what. Eli Manning was a great Hall of Famer. Uh, I had, I, I'm going deep a little bit, fellas. Uh, I had the great honor and privilege to play against his father, Archie, at the tail end of his career. So. He comes from a great pedigree, of course, um, and uh, I watched him from afar. Uh, Eli throughout his time with the Giants for many, many years, what, 16 years or whatever it was. Uh, he was just a truly, truly a professional. Uh, if he was any such word as a professional guy who, who understood the concept of being a ball player in the New York metropolitan area, he was definitely one who, who was able to do that. And uh, I was proud of the fact not only did he play and uh, have a lot of success on the field, but he did a lot of things off the field. He was giving back to the community and the things that he was able to do. So I truly believe that he's a Hall of Famer, and I'm sure he'll get in there. He should anyway. Um, he's a Hall of Famer in my book and many other guys who played in the past and as well as in the present um, that he should get in in that time come in those next five years. Perry, sports shows like ours always like to compare different eras of football, different eras of any sport, and how positions evolve over the time. What do you think are the primary differences, maybe in terms of technique, in terms of skill, et cetera, of cornerback, the cornerback position when you played versus today or versus, again, other eras of football? What do you think are the primary differences as a whole? Well, the difference is now you can't hit like you used to hit. Once upon a time, the technique is different now. The tackling techniques. Can't hit him high around the around the head strap anymore. 
got to hit him around his waistline or whatever. Uh, so the, the technique is, is not as, as aggressive as it once were, the jam technique, as they call it in the, the defensive back uh, secondary aspect of uh, playing. Uh, it's just uh, the whole the total game has changed. Uh, you know, I don't think it'd be hard for me to play now because uh, it was about you really hitting hard and really wrapping up. You can't hit the guy in open field too many times. He's going across the middle anymore, so you got to hit him low. Uh, but uh, the way I was taught, you're supposed to hit the guy high um, and uh, wrap up. And But it's changed. The, the game has changed, and I understand it's changed for the betterment of uh, safety for these guys. There's a lot of injuries going on. It's no, it's no secret. It is uh, the CTE. Uh, you don't, nobody want to get that. But unfortunately, in, in the name of the game is uh, playing rough. It is a barbaric game. It's a tough game. But uh, you have to realize, again, um, that – you know, it can't anything can happen. But uh, I think overall, the game you kind of make it safe to a degree. But at the same token, it's still a rough game and it's still a tough game. And uh, the guys, whatever's going to happen, is going to happen. The way I look at it, it's like playing Russian roulette. You never know what's going to happen. Is hopefully you come out on the better side, on the better end, and, and you know, in the end result. We are speaking to Perry Williams. If you don't know who he is, two-time Super Bowl champion with the New York Giants. Keynote speaker, he's had an unbelievable career as an NFL player the years that he played with the New York Giants and the success that he had with the New York Giants, 87 being the number one uh, cornerback for the New York Giants. And really, his growth as a keynote speaker, a speaker to high school kids, kindergartners, has been absolutely amazing. You're bringing up CTE, and this is, to me, a big story. And, and it's been a big story for the NFL, and they're trying to figure out ways to protect players all the different things that we've seen on all different networks, uh, talking about what the NFL needs to do and what the NFL has done in the last couple of years of Roger Cattell. What are your thoughts with some of these ex-players that have gone through all the trouble that they've had with... Uh, uh, well, uh, I'm very sad to hear. I really <laughs> didn't did not know that too much because I had been really keeping up with football. Uh, after I left the game, I got so tired of doing my outreach programming and doing my leadership initiatives, then I kind of left football for a little while. But uh, but just to find out that over these last 20, uh, 10, 15, 20 some odd years, a lot of these guys are starting to suffer. And I did not know that until recent times. Uh, a lot of these guys with CTE and the other crippling element, uh, elements that they have, uh, a lot of guys that I know I play against are crippled now. A lot of them on a walker, like, you know, all kind of different things that is going on. So, uh, I'm happy that NFL is doing a lot of things. I know they just had a new CBA collective bargaining agreement yep. uh, uh, contract came out, and that's going to be the fit of all of us and the guys who played in the past as well as myself. So I appreciate that opportunity as well that they're going to help make sure they help everybody. Uh, now I think that should be the case because those guys from the 40s and 50s or whatever, even back in the 30s, it was pioneers for yesteryear. So those kind of people, I know a lot of those men are probably – deceased now, but the guys who play, I guess I would say in the 60s or 70s and or 80s on up, of course, so you want to take care of those guys. But if you guys kind of help pave the way to what is the NFL is at now, I think they're what, 15 or $20 billion a year. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's no chump change. That's nothing to sneeze at. So uh, to help these guys out there, that's the that's that's more righteous thing to do, I believe. Perry, I want you to explain or compare players today from players from your generation? Well, the, 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 my generation uh, was hard-nosed guys. They had a lot of great players uh, in that era. In that 60s, 80s, and, and in the, the early 90s when I was there, I, I went through a litany of great guys. You know, I had the privilege of going against the Earl Camels and the Chuck Munsters of the world, John Riggins. All the way at the end of my career, I was going against the Emmett Smith and uh, Barry Sanders and those kind of guys. And, uh, Jerry Rice and Michael Irving, and so all the way up before when I first began going against um, you know, uh, John Jefferson and some of these uh, Art Monk and some of these other guys. So I had the great honor and privilege to play in various the two different eras, eighties and the nineties, and I had a chance to play against a lot of great guys. The players now, uh, as I said, I don't really watch a lot of pro football anymore. I love high school and college. I'm, I'm big into that, but being the uh, fact that I'm from North Carolina, where I live in North Carolina, you know, high school football is big. Obviously, uh, uh, college football. But uh, 
but I think that the, the guys are big and they're strong and they're tough now. Um, uh, as compared to when I was playing, they, they had big guys then, but not like they are now. These guys are much bigger, a little bit bigger than we were at the time. Um, a lot of the, especially the offensive linemen, defensive linemen, uh, the big. Uh, but uh, I just think that um, these guys uh, nowadays, uh, I think they got a little easier. And which is that's fine for them uh, with the uh, the players' association union. Uh, these guys uh, practice what once a day now, or something like that. Once Back a, in my day, before, before once every other day. They had to practice twice a day, sometimes three times a day. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's, it's a little bit, it's a little tough take walk for them with some of these young guys now. I call it country club. But uh, but it, it was, it was a, it's a different mentality. It's a different era. Uh, the generations have changed. Uh, but football is still football. You still got to tackle. You know, catch and run and do all those different things anyway to play the game and play the game uh, prospectively the right way. Uh, you got to really go out there and uh, put your all out there, your best effort, your best foot forward. And these guys are out there doing some great things. I got one of the boys that's from my hometown in North Carolina. <laughs> we got a program where I come from in North Carolina, even though it's a small area. I live in the next town over from Pinehurst, North Carolina. A lot of people in the like audience would hear the Pinehurst, the golf resort. Well, uh, I live in the next town, a little town called Hamlet. So uh, we've had in the last, uh, uh, in, since 1973, here it is, 2020, uh, we've had 25 NFL players come out of a little town of uh, 50,000 people in the whole county. Where I come from. So wow. the newest mm. kid that you know about, you've heard of right now, Melvin E. Uh, L.A. Chargers, I guess they call them now. <laughs> the great linebacker, they got out there. He's from my high school. So we got a lot of lithium. Straight high school, Darnell Ellaby, he would play with the uh, mm-hmm. Ravens in mm-hmm. uh, 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 Philadelphia, I think. New Orleans. You know, he was on that team with the linebackers. So we've had a, a litany of golf ball players. Uh, Mike Quick, all four wide receivers for the Eagles uh, for many years, 80s and early 90s. Uh, Blue Spree, another defensive cornerback, played for the Bengals. He was, he was ahead of me, but he played a long time. Then we had our great baseball player, played for the uh, Los Angeles Dodgers for many, many years, a guy named Frank the Sub. So, uh, we we uh, we we growing pretty good down there in my area where I'm from, and I uh, had a lot of success down there over the years. But I'm I'm happy for the guys that that we got right now. We have only one now in the NFL for my area, and uh, but I'm happy that uh, you know that Melvin is doing very well out there in the California, and uh, I'm sure he'll have many more great years ahead of it. We are talking to ex New York Giant and two time Super Bowl champion, keynote speaker Perry. Williams. Perry, you mentioned a lot of the names of the players of your era that you played against, the, the great players, different running backs, different receivers. Is there, is there any matchup maybe that players that a person wouldn't know about or wasn't as high of a radar player that was a tough matchup for you? And if so, why? Like a, a guy that was more under the radar. Well, <laughs> all the guys that I played against in the 80s and 90s, all great ball players across the board, actually. Uh, well, yeah, Gary Clark, Gary Clark, the Washington Redskins. He he got a little publicity, but uh, Art Monk got more publicity than he did the other great uh, Hall of Fame wide receivers they had there in that time frame. Um, Gary Clark, he was uh, he got he was uh, a tough little matchup. He was shifty. He was a great little player uh, and did a lot of great things. I think he went to James Madison University in Virginia uh, when he came out here and Charles Haley, if I'm not mistaken, is on tech on this there, but. Uh, names like him, uh, Gary Clark comes to mind uh, uh, quite a bit. Uh, he was a tremendous fall player down there. And um, I don't think a lot of people realize, I'm sure the D.C. area, Maryland, Virginia, Northern Virginia know about him, but across the country a lot of people didn't realize. But he was a great, great uh, player to play against. It was a great matchup, and uh, was, he was tough to play. But um, I always admired his, his game and uh, the way he went about his business how he, as a professional. Perry, I have. I want to get off the football conversation. I want to talk about you. And I, I was reading a little story about you uh, in Newsday. There was a story a couple of couple of months ago that they wrote about you. And what is your role as a director of sports management at LIU? It's a beautiful school. School right now, the school is absolutely growing. Their sports program is growing, and now you're one of the leaders of the program. What are your thoughts with LIU and the college, and and really the program right now for sports? 
well, as you said, uh, it's a great school. It's a beautiful school. I had known about it when I was playing for the Giants. At least, obviously, I lived in New Jersey, by the Meadowlands. So, but I had heard of LIU at that time. It was called LIU Post, uh, TW Post. But uh, it's changed now since they had the merge of the uh, Brooklyn campus as well as the Brookville campus, with the uh, time I, I call it in the country here in the suburb. Um, they have joined together. We are unified one t- uh, one one team now. Uh, called Long Island University, completely uh, shocked. They changed the logo, the name, from uh, what they had before. Uh, so the consolidation is it's a great transition to the uh, D1 level, as I said. Um, now is it's a wonderful experience because um, it's changed for me. It was a new beginning um, to meet these young men and ladies and the student athletes and this is student body in general. Um, I, I, it's, uh, it's a lot of the stuff that's in place out here already. I just want to add on, as, as we call teamwork, and just make it grow and, and uh, be possible, and not only as athletes, as the student athletes, but just as students in general. Uh, it's a great school, got a great, great business school here. Uh, we just got a great school called the Port, uh, across the board. Uh, the business school is under the, I'm under the umbrella of the business school, the College of Management. Uh, we have one of the top uh, premier business schools in the country. A lot of our professors and instructors, these are Wall Street students. They teach in business and they teach finance and, uh, and communication class. So we got, a, you know, data analytics. We're doing a lot of different things that we're planning on doing under the umbrella of the business school. And as we know, sports is a business. Sports management is right now is a trillion-dollar industry all over the world. Uh, so it's a lot of opportunities trying to build a uh, Relationships with other companies that I hear are throughout this, this region, throughout this uh, metro area, uh, for internships and uh, uh, job placement opportunities. So that's one of the things that I'm working on real hard right now is pushing that. I also I lecture a couple of classes, uh, the introduction to sports management class, and then I also have the uh, psychology of sports class that I lecture. So um, I'm, I, 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 I enjoy doing that with the students. I uh, have a nice, nice enrollment that we got. We got over 50 students. We just started the program. That's up, amazing. Uh, this past year, so we we up about 52, 53. So my goal and my objective, hopefully, we get it up to 150, 200 someday or more. Uh, just a problem. That's like anything, yes, fellas. You know, baby got to crawl before he walk. So <laughs> LIU, LIU is on the move. It's going to take a little minute. It's going to take a little time. It's like the New York Giants when we got what I got there. The New York Giants wasn't doing well. In 1983, we went, what, 3-12-1. And yep. then from 1984 to 1993, uh, we went on a chair. We became great players. Uh, well, that great- is... You you also drafted arguably one of the greatest football players of all time in Lawrence Taylor. That's not too shabby either. <laughs> yeah, he was two years ahead of me. Um, he got, yeah, he, I, I knew about LT in college because uh, I went to NC State and he went to the University of North Carolina. That other school, I like to say, teasing me. But, um, but uh, he was a tremendous ball player. But to get back to the subject matter, which you asked me about the question here, that mm-hmm. was the education standpoint. LIU is an upswing. Uh, we're going to do some great things, not only on the sports endeavors, but we want to do great things for the kids and the going out and being prosperous and being successful in life in the in the real world someday. Life skills, uh, people skills, soft skills. I mean, you name it, that's what we work on. We have the pillars of success. We work on the honesty, integrity, loyalty, uh, commitment, uh, respect. So, you know, I think that's very important. If the young men and women, I don't care what, be in the business world, education institution, all the sports world. You got to be able to survive and sustain your life and know how to govern yourself and carry yourself and be a, what we call a true professional, not only on the sports field, but in the, in the world itself. It's amazing. It really is. We are speaking to Perry Williams. If you guys don't know him, two time Super Bowl champion with the New York Giants from 83 all the way to 90, 93, right? Not 84 to 93. 94. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. 84 yeah. to 90, 94. Well, it's 10 years. 10 years of yeah. NFL mm-hmm. football, two-time Super Bowl champion with the New York Giants, and, and keynote speaker. What were your, you know, being that you went and, and spoke in front of the Pentagon and speaking in front of all the top officials, what was it like standing in front of senators and mayors and, and, and people, pol- politicians, who some people couldn't stand. I mean, me Most being one of them. Most people couldn't stand. Uh, me it being one of them. It was a great experience. 
Yeah. It was a great experience because, um, you know, all the four military the branches of the military, I was talking to admirals and generals and secretary of state secretary or commerce secretary of this or that or whatever, and uh, mayors and pol- other politicians. So it was a great experience for me. You know, the way I got, the way that happened, fellows, is um, word of mouth. Mm. You know, uh, somebody told somebody else about me, and the word of mouth got all the way to uh, Washington, D.C., and from the, I was well, live in North Carolina, of course, but obviously I'm working up here. But the word of mouth had got around, and um, I got a phone call from a connect, uh, contact that I knew and said that they, uh, they wanted to talk to me. So uh, that's how I got the, uh, the gig, and uh, what a great honor it was for me to talk in front of the 350 uh, brightest minds in the country, the men, women and men at large. And, um, and my topic that night that I spoke on, I spoke about 30 minutes. They wanted me to do a little five brimstone win one for the gift of speech. <laughs> and I, my topic was what it takes to be a winner. So uh, I think I did pretty well that night. I got about a three minute standing <laughs> over there. So I think I did okay. Well, you know, Not with politicians. A country boy like me from North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> with politicians, you don't know what to expect, especially when you're speaking in front of them about anything. <laughs> That has nothing yeah. to do with them. so Nothing to do with their extreme viewpoints. <laughs> so, if it doesn't have anything to do with them, I'm very surprised you got their attention. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think uh, I, got, I was able to get their attention, and they, um, and they kept their attention. I kind of get them engaged a little bit. That's the most important thing is to get them engaged. And, and once you get them engaged, you got to hit them quick, fast, in a hurry because they won't hold their attention span too long. So got to hurry up and get, get the point across. Well, I'll tell you this, Perry. Um, we're here. We're based out of Long Island, and we're doing some big things over here. We would love to work with you and, well, it was CW Post, but LIU, Long Island University, and maybe doing something. Uh, I know you guys have a great sports program over there. We do play-by-play. We do some stuff not only throughout our studios, but we go to different events. Uh, we, we do a lot of um, – live shows throughout different parts of the country. We've been to Foxwoods. We've been to Mohegan Suns. We've been to all the way at Atlantic City. We would love to do live shows and do some interviews when it comes to the coach, the players, and get them more involved with not only sports from Long Island, but sports around the country. And we have some big things that we're going to be announcing very, very soon, and we would love, love to do some some work with LIU. Well, fantastic. Well, that's, that sounds music to my ears, and uh, the more the merrier. I never get too much. You know, <laughs> get, get too much of that wisdom. Well, don't tell that to Lawrence Taylor. That we can get and get all the help we can get, and uh, that's what it's all about. It's about networking. That's one of the main emphasis I put out to all the students all across the board, across the, both universities, because I'm also the far of the uh, university. Uh, something I had never heard of, what the president meant with me. He said, I was uniform now. I said, the far, <laughs> which is the faculty athletic representative. I'm like the liaison for both campuses, the Brooklyn campus as well as the Brookfield campus. Well, what I'll, do, what I'll do is I'll reach out to Clifford. He'll give me all your information, and we'll actually uh, uh, swap emails, and we'll do we'll conversate, and then we'll do something together. I would really like to work with you guys I love what I love what you're doing. I, I read the Newsday story that came out a couple of months ago, and Clifford yeah. has been reaching out to me on LinkedIn, and he's a really really nice guy. I, I don't know how you guys are affiliated with each other. Um, yeah, he's one of he's one of my colleagues. Oh, uh, he, he's a great guy. He really is, and uh, he's a sharp guy. He's a great speaker himself. <laughs> he's smooth speaker. He's smooth, but. Uh, we, we would love to get you on and talk more about what you're doing with LIU, and we'd love to come over there after this whole corona epidemic is over, and we can actually have a life, and we can actually go places and, and, and do the things that we love to do is interact with fans and interact with people, which uh, we would love to come over there and do something. Oh, we lost him. We lost him. We lost him, but if he calls back up, we'll, we'll get him back on. Um, but that's uh, Perry Williams. Uh, ex Super Bowl champion, two time Super Bowl champion with the 1984 to 1993 New York Giants. Uh, very, very nice guy. Really mm. is. Why don't we go to a quick break? When we come back, we'll get more into what we really have to get into when it comes to sports at 631 965 4990. This is Down to the Wire, and we'll be back after this. It is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. 
Edward Lehman has been a trusted insurance advisor for over 16 years with insurance solutions for auto, home, commercial, life, and retirement. He's located at 54 Sunnyside Boulevard, Suite H in Plainview. That's just 1,000 feet south of 495. Local agent, local advice. The time to think about insurance is before you need it. So do yourself a favor and before you pay your next insurance bill, give Ed and his team a call. 516-935-3900 or visit them online at www.allstate.com forward slash EL. Edward H. Lehman Insurance is your trusted insurance advisor. It is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. You're, 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 you're listening, listening to, to Down, Down to, to the, the Wire. Wire on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. 631-965-4990 is the number to call. And we lost Perry, but Perry got we finally got him back on. Thank you for uh, calling us back, Perry. I want to finish up. Uh, I, I really appreciate you calling the show uh, and, and talking about all the great things that you've been doing for LIU and what you have done really to take a, a school like CW Post and LIU to higher heights right now as a director of their sports, uh, their sports program. But one question I have for you before we let you go, and it's been a question that I've been wanting to ask ex-NFL players. We have a lot of ex-NFL players that do call the show and we do interact with, but I want to know your opinion, knowing that you play the defense position. And, and you were speaking about how the game is completely changed. And we've argued the points on the GOAT, who's the greatest quarterback to ever play the game. Now, uh, mine mine has always been and always will be Joe Montana because of what he did in a time where the game was completely defensively played and how he transitioned the game from defense to offense. And yes, they had great teams. And yes, there wasn't a free agency market like it is now. But what are your thoughts on who is the greatest? And, and it doesn't have to be a quarterback in your eyes. And I know you play with Lawrence Taylor and some people will argue it was Lawrence Taylor. Who was the greatest NFL player of all time? Well, the greatest NFL player was my opposition. And I, uh, I, of course, I'm biased when I say Lawrence Taylor, which he was the greatest player. But the greatest opposition I played against is the guy you just called, Joe Montana, by far the greatest. Do you think... Was, Joe, Mon- Joe Montana was a surgeon. I called him the surgeon. He was slicing dicey to death. I mean, he, he was a tremendous ball player, savviness, and mentally, physically tough, even though he was a smaller guy. But uh, he was tough as nails, and I always admired his game and the success he had. Uh, but he was just uh, savvy, uh, very highly intelligent, of course. And uh, he went out there, and he was, he was a ball player. He was about winning. And uh, obviously he showed that by winning well, what, four championships, I think he had. Mm-hmm. And um, he demonstrated that. But he was a classic guy, too. Uh, that's what another reason I would say that about him, because off the field, uh, he, I talked to him on several occasions, and uh, he was a guy who was a real true professional, and I always appreciated that about him. One question, last question I have for you, and I want you to answer it. And I, I know a lot of people probably have asked you this question over the years. They just had a 30 for 30 Bill and Bill um, and eight, and Bill Belichick and Bill Parcells, who a lot of people have said over the years they get along, they don't get along, back and forth banter, and, and they were actually sitting and telling the story on how they built the New York Giants and how the New York Giants became a two-time Super Bowl champions and all the trials and tribulations and how Bill, Bill Belichick has followed everywhere Bill Parcells has gone, and that's probably why he probably didn't take the Jets job and he flew all the way over there to New England and took over the New England Patriots job because he didn't want to take over Bill Parcells' mess. Who was the greatest coach you ever played with, you played under? Was it Bill Belichick as your defensive coordinator, or was it Bill Parcells? Yeah, yeah, yeah Bill Belichick. Really? I mean, I, I, I'm up in the air a little bit. I'm a little biased again, fellas, because uh, my defensive coordinator, when I was my last three years at NC State, um, Wolfpack down in Raleigh, North Carolina, was uh, Pete Carroll was my defensive coordinator in college <laughs> for three years. So Pete Carroll, I had him before I even had Bill Belichick or Parcells, so. I was around a superstar then. Mm -hmm. And at that time, he was on the rise himself back in 1980 to 83. So, uh, but Pete was a great, great people, uh, players coach. Uh, Belichick, all around, he was just like a a scientist, a mad scientist. This guy (laughs) can just revolutionize his defenses and make things happen. And Paul Sales, he was a great team coach, too, as well. So, 
But if I had to make a choice, of Belichick was probably the greatest one I've ever been associated with. Wow, wow, and a lot of people, a lot of people wouldn't have expected that, knowing that Bill Parcells was your head coach. But I, and I've talked to a well, bunch of like, Giants. He was my way. I'm not, not taking nothing away from being no, a no, 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 no. I know. I know. Tremendous coach. I know. No doubt about that. But um, before to Belichick being on the defensive side of the ball and being with him for eight years straight and on meetings and constant meet meetings with him, um, my greatest experience I ever had in my eight years with uh, Belichick was um, I came in. I had. Uh, Kind of had a little Charlie horse after the gap. Got what game I played in, and I came in early one morning, about five thirty, six o'clock, quarter to six in the morning at the complex, Giant Stadium at the time. And I got back ice, and I said I just go ice myself a little bit before I have our team meeting at nine o'clock. Well, I went in there about six, called myself going to watch some film, and by myself. And I heard this rumbling going on inside the defense meeting room. And I opened the door, and it was Bill Belichick sitting in there riding a stationary bike. Uh, watching film, and he just realized it was me. He brought me in, and we sit down for 30 minutes. And I learned more than 30 minutes than I learned in my whole entire career. It's a professional, college, high school, middle school, elementary. In 30 minutes, I learned that much from him. Unbelievable. Amazing. Unbelievable. I, I'll tell you this. I'm not a Bill Belichick fan because of what he did to the Jets, and I grew up a Jet fan. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I, I, know, I know what it feels to be pretty much shut down by – Arguably one of the greatest coaches to ever coach in any professional sport. Um, Perry, why don't you tell the fans how they can find you, how they can search you, how they can search you on the LIU um, programming as far as their website. How could they find you so they can contact you if they have any questions, yeah, if they want to write about yeah, you? Yeah, they can use uh, my, my address and my mailing address is 720 Northern Boulevard, Brookville, New York, one one. Four eight. Uh, my email is Perry dot Williams at liu dot edu. Uh, my office phone number is uh, 516-299-3280. and uh, you can find me there on forty one eighty three. So you can find me on, on that on my email or call my uh, uh, mailing address or through the telephone. Perry, thank you for calling the show. We really. We really loved you, and we would love you to come back on in the, in the near future. We would love to talk more uh, about uh, Thank your... you very much. I enjoyed it, fellas. Absolutely. Uh, good luck and good great success to you guys. In Thank the you. Thank you so much. And let's talk. I'll reach out to you. I would love to work with I'm you like... guys in LIU. Sound like a winner. Thank All right, you. my friend. Perry Williams, ladies and gentlemen, two-time Super Bowl champion with the New York Giants. Uh, great guy, great background. Told you a little bit of, about Bill Belichick. I asked him, I asked him the question, mm -hmm. who did he think was a better NFL coach, being being that he was under Bill Belichick and Bill Parcells, two arguably of the two arguably of the greatest coaches of NFL history. I wanted to know what he thought. Who was the better coach? And he said Bill Belichick, which I'm very I'm very surprised. But uh, when we come back, we'll get more into. The Week in Sports, I've got a lot to talk about when we come back here on Down to the Wire. It, it, it's the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Do current market conditions have you nervous? Our experienced team of financial professionals at Heritage Harbor Financial Associates understands that no two investors are alike. We all have different goals, needs, and appetites for risk. That's why the one-size-fits-all approach does not work, especially when planning for retirement. At Heritage Harbor Financial Associates, we analyze your unique investment style so that you can work toward your individual retirement goals on your terms. Heritage Harbor Financial Associates can help you take steps to reach your retirement goals by providing a wide array of financial financial products to fit your needs, even for the risk adverse. Give us a call at 631-331-6599 to learn more or to set up an appointment with one of our financial professionals. You can also find us on the web at hhfa.org or on Facebook at facebook.com slash hhfa.org. Our number again is 631-331-6599. That's 631-331-6599. Investments in stock bonds and mutual funds and variable annuities are not FDIC insured and are subject to fluctuation in value market risk, including loss of principal Heritage Harbor Financial Associates, offer securities through AXA Advisors, LLC, New York, New York, member FINRA, SIPC, annuity and insurance products offered through AXA Network, LLC. This is Mario Andretti. You know me as a race car driver, but I'm also a Meals on Wheels volunteer. 
I've raced against the sport's biggest personalities, but I've never met more vibrant, amazing people than the seniors served by Meals on Wheels. As a volunteer, you deliver a hot, nutritious meal and a friendly hello to someone just like your mother, grandfather, or next door neighbor. These seniors are inspiring people with incredible stories to share, and they love to see you. The smiles you get back are priceless. Delivering with Meals on Wheels is easy, and you don't have to drive like me for it to be quick. You can volunteer your lunch break once a week or just once a month. With one in six seniors facing hunger and many more living in isolation, your lunch break can make a real difference. So, America, let's do lunch. Volunteer your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. Okay, Simon, what are you wearing right now? Nothing. That's right. And what do people normally wear? Clothes. Exactly. So now Mommy's going to teach you how to dress yourself. Clothes keep us warm, they look good, and if we go out without them, the neighbors will talk. So it's important to know how to get dressed. Here's how it's done. Underwear always comes first, name tag at the back, then pants, then shirt. Get the first button in the right hole, or you have to start all over. If you're wearing a tie, it goes over, round, round, through, and pull tight. Tuck your shirt into your pants and zip up your fly. Socks go in first, then shoes right on right, left on left. With shoelaces, just take the ends, cross them over, switch the loops. The rabbit goes down the hole, pull tight, and you're left with bunny ears. I love bunnies. Good to know. Now remember, spots don't go with stripes, socks don't go with sandals, and if you've tucked in your shirt, wear a belt. Got it? Why are your pants on your head? Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But spending just two minutes twice a day making sure they brush their teeth is easier and could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. For fun two-minute videos to watch while brushing, visit 2min2x.org. That's 2min2x.org. A message from the Partnership for Healthy Mouths, Healthy Lives, and the Ag Council. So you see, son, good manners are very, very important. Someday, many years from now, when you're a grown-up, you'll be a man. And when you are, you should be a gentleman. Do you want me to go through it one more time? Yes. Yes, please. Yes, please. Exactly. Always say please, thank you, you're welcome, and excuse me. Sit up straight, hold doors open for ladies. If a door's shut, then knock first. Don't burp, don't swear, don't speak with a mouthful, don't reach across people's plates, keep your elbows off the table. What table? And don't interrupt. While we're at it, don't stare, don't use foul language, don't call people names, but do remember people's names. Always share your toys, play nice, and cover your mouth when you cough or sneeze. On the bus, give up your seat to anyone who has trouble standing. Bottom line, treat others the way you'd like to be treated. Got it? Got it. And stop picking your nose. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But spending just two minutes twice a day making sure they brush their teeth is easier and could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. For fun two-minute videos to watch while brushing, visit 2min2x.org. That's 2min2x.org. A message from the Partnership for Healthy Miles, Healthy Lives, and the Ag Council. Hey, there he is. How's it going? I'm having a stroke. Are you going to shake my hand or what? I'm having a stroke. Wow, you're not even moving your arm. I'm having a stroke. Are you okay? I'm having a stroke. Your face looks weird, too. I'm having a stroke. Are you having a seizure or something? I'm having a stroke. When someone is having a stroke, they may not be able to say it with words, but their body language will tell you loud and clear. I'm having a stroke. You just need to know the sudden signs. Look for FAST. F-A-S-T. F. Face drooping. A. Arm weakness. Or S. Speech difficulty. Then T. Time. Time to call 911 immediately. Because the sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Know the sudden signs. Face. Arm. Speech. Time. Spot a stroke. Fast. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. You're, you're, you're listening to the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Six three one nine seven one eight zero seven zero is the number, as you guys know. You could call us. Remember, you could also go to our website at www.worldwidesportsradio.com. You can follow us on all our social medias by going to Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, and YouTube. Worldwide Sports Radio Network, as you know. We have a first caller of the day. Before we put him through, I want to give a shout-out to Perry Williams, ex-Super Bowl champion, two-time Super Bowl champion with the New York Giants for calling the show. And talking about uh, everything about the New York Giants to his keynote, speaking in front of the politicians over there in Washington, D.C., 
and everything that he's doing. But we have our first call of the day. You guys know know him as Kenny from Upstate. I know him as the guy that owes me a Thanksgiving <laughs> dinner. What's going on? Yeah, and you still haven't scheduled that. And it's being put off even more. Everything's being put off because of the virus. So, Well, wait, hold on one second, Kenny. Well, we don't know if you're carrying the virus. And by the way, by the way, Speedy is going into... But Speedy is going to business, and I think he wants to bring you in as his business partner. He's going into a business for vibrators. Do you oh know what a vibrator God, is? Enough. Kenny, do you know what a vibrator is? Yeah, I know what a vibrator is. Well, well, actually, Speedy is actually going into business, and he's going to be selling vibrators on the black market, and he needed a partner, and I kind of requested uh-huh. you, and I'm happy that you called the show. <sighs> What do you think about that? You being partners with Speedy Beatty? I, I, I could help advertise on YouTube. I oh, give you that much. Well, what kind of colors do you like? Do you like pink? you like indigo? you like green? What do you like? I'm sure pink. I could tell all the women and gay people. I know all about that. Sure oh, yeah. So you could sell pink vibrators. So that's good. Speedy is trying to figure out his color right now. So I don't care. What do you mean don't care? You just said... How that- do I care about the color when I'm not the one having it? Well, but you're, you're going to be selling it. So you have to like the color. You have to like the color. Oh, God. You don't like the color? So you're telling me if it came down to it, if you don't like the color, you're not going to sell it? I'll go for whatever profits more. Oh, well, 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 I, well, he's telling you pink would profit for women. So would you sell pink or purple or blue or shiny red or yellow? What would Depends you do? Depends on what the market is. Well, that I figure. I figure <laughs> the market falls off highly from the tree when it comes to you, Speedy. Anyways, uh, Kenny, what would you like to talk about, my friend? That was a great interview with Perry Williams. Thank you, my oh, friend. Man. Thank you very, very much. Uh, what would you? All the shows, but I'm like, hold on, they're interviewing somebody famous. This is a no miss. No, oh, it's a no miss. And you liked the interview? Did you enjoy it? Yes, I enjoyed it very much. Well, did you see the new uh, graphic I have for you? Which, if you go and check out our social media right now, people are absolutely tuned in to see who you are, Kenny. We are talking to Mr. Kenny from Upstate. And you can see the beautiful turkey picture that I have you pressed in on the breast. What do you think about that? I'm not actually looking at it. But it's okay. You ah. can check it out later. You can check it out later. Oh, I, I, I see it now. How do you like it, Kenny? Does it look like you? Definitely. I figured nice. Like <laughs> do you like the picture? It's pretty funny, man. <laughs> I'll tell you this. Of the graphics that he had for all, all our callers, that one was definitely my favorite one. <laughs> so, Kenny, before we let you go, what would you like to talk about? Well, everything's kind of on hold. I was going to do, well, when are we going to schedule that turkey dinner? I mean. <clears throat> well, we'll have to push it. Wild. We'd have to push it past probably till about July or August. But. I do want to have a turkey dinner with you. You promised it. And okay. uh, we, we don't have as many people for you to feed, so it'll be good for you and your father, and it'll save you guys a lot of money. Right. Like, I'm supposed to see Guns N' Roses in July. I hope that yeah. happens. Well, are you a huge Axl Rose fan? I'm a huge Guns N' Roses fan. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm that big a fan of Axl Rose these days, but, you know, <laughs> he's part of it. Are you welcome to the jungle? Well, if you're, you know, your your slogan for the vibrator could be "Welcome to my jungle." Oh God! What do you think? I have taken a good song and made it weird. Oh well, that that would be great for you. I mean, I think this would be perfect for you—a perfect name for you. We could say your slogan and yours okay, and Speedy's Speedy's business. Really serious about this? Yes. You should go to Twitter. Yes. You can find me under Kenny TV Six. I also have Surreal Art. It's a real Ken art, so I have that. There you go. And you can sell art. You or can sell the vibrator. Aren't, supposed to pa- aren't you supposed to paint a picture of Errol? <laughs> he was, but thank God he so did. It, it's a real <laughs> art Ken. So okay. you can look me up on those. You can send me a message if you're serious about the vibrator thing. Yes, he's out. very serious about it, and he's just w- trying to work in what kind of colors he wants to sell. And I think you guys combining together and being – 
Welcome to our jungle and have the vibrator, vibrator coming out of a jungle God. background. I think this would be a great sales tactic for you guys to sell in the near future. I, I think you guys could be very wealthy. All right, that's cool, man. Yeah. Well. Like I'm supposed to do a baseball show every week with my friend that's a baseball geek, but the baseball season is kind of being put on hold a little bit. Well, I figured it does, but you know what? Kenny, we have you on the show, and we don't need any baseball when we have Kenny from upstate on the show. I'm just saying, my friend's a geek, and, you know, you got a geek. It's kind of like you guys are all sports geeks, right? Well, hold on one second. You're calling me a geek now? I mean, you're taking shots at me now, Kenny. Not really. No, I, you're, you're calling me a geek. I, obsessed with sports. I didn't say I was obsessed geek. with sports. Now, I'm not that's an not obsessed person. Thing. Well, I'm not obsessed with sports. I'm a, I'm a sports fan, but I'm not obsessed like Speedy is or or a Tyler okay. is. You know. You can say Speedy's a sports geek. Oh yes, definitely right. Well, Speedy's a geek. Period. All right, but I'm saying you're you have sports fans, and then you have sports geeks. Those that go professional, they're the ones I respect. Every other sports, most sports geeks that don't go professional are kind of boring. Mm. I've known some. Mm. Well, thank you, Kenny. I, I, I love the information that you give to us every time you call the show. And I do watch your show, by the way, and I think it's hilarious. And I think the cowboy hats that you wear are def definitely endless to watch every time you wear these. Thanks, uh, but I also uh, am part of the Don A show. Oh, I'm Saturday sorry. Saturday night around 11. Oh, okay. What do you guys talk about? Yeah, Do Don looks at it as it's not his show. It's our show. He just hosts it. Mm. It's great. Oh, yeah. And what do you guys talk about? I don't know. We just sit around, joke around, and bust balls and all that. Yeah, so... So, so I, basically, Errol. <laughs> so you're telling me that if I called the show, I'd be the leader of the pack. I'd be busting everybody's balls. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, I don't know. Don is the host of the show, so he kind of weeds everything. And we just sit around and hang out. Oh, so, so, so Donnie audience. won't let me speak. He'd pretty mm. much push me to the back burner and say, you no, know what, I don't no, want to hear your you voice. speak to Don. Yeah. Does he know, Don uh, speak? Does he know Donnie Martin? What? Does he know Donnie Martin? No, I'm talking about Don A. Yeah, I know yeah. Don A. He knows Donnie Martin, right? Yeah. Yeah, I figured he knows Donnie Martin. If he's Don A, he knows Donnie Martin. Now, he knows, uh, what's that guy from the Mets? He knows. Oh, there's a lot of guys I know from the Mets. I just don't know that if you know who Don Martin really is. Do you know who Don Martin is? No, not off the top of my head. Well, you know who Don A is, and that's all that matters. But thank you for calling the show, Kenny. I'd say he knows, uh, who's... <laughs> Thank you, Kenny, for cursing on the show. Thank you. Ah, uh, Kenny, Kenny, Kenny. Who oh, cares? You know, you know Lenny Dykstra. That's All name. right. No, so, so why don't we get Lenny and him on the show at the same time? And I, I bust both their balls. <laughs> Actually, we'll talk about his upcoming that. boxing match. I would listen to that. Donnie had Dice call him to the show. Andrew Dice Clay. Really? Well, tell Donnie I want to get Dice on the phone, and I could bust his balls as well. Sure, you can call in. It's every Friday night at 11. He has a long intro that starts around 10.20. Oh, my God. How long? It's a 40-minute intro? A four, yeah. <laughs> and he has a long outro, too. The outros and the intros are the best part of the show. Well, well thanks. So, so you're I would not... hope so if they're 40 minutes. Oh, hold on one second. Hold on one second, Kenny. So you're on the show, and the best part of the show is when you're not on it. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Kenny. <laughs> oh. Uh, Cam Mom from the Stern Show call once. All right. That's great. Well, tell him that uh, I'd like to get him on the show and bust his balls as well. So. Well, you can call. I will. You know what? I am going to call in the show. Anybody can call. I am going to call in the show just to bust both your balls. How's that sound? <laughs> and then you can say Errol <laughs> Marks was on your show. Okay. All right. We got it? We're good? You can call in and you can say who you are. I'm going to say who I am. I'm going to say that I'm selling, I'm helping sell oh, uh, uh, the Jungle Fever. Oh, God. The Jungle, the Welcome to the Jungle tour of vibrators for you guys. What, what do you think about that? <laughs> That's pretty good. Well, thank you. Well, I'll put a giant sign on yours. How's that sound? Give you a nice little symbol on yours. 
All right, that's cool. All right. You don't put the Jets. No, I won't. And I'll, <laughs> I'll have Eli sign that vibrator for you. How's that sound? All right, that's cool. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Kenny, thank you for calling the show. Keep calling, my friend. You're awesome. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. All right, Kenny. Kenny from Upstate. As you guys know, he's great. He's great for the show. He's great for everything. <laughs> All right, I want to get into this particular story. And I know a lot of people aren't talking about it. And the story pretty much goes into the rules in professional sports. Now, I know I, I've been watching HBO, HBO Sports, and, and they have different documentaries over the years that talk about the rules changing and, and, and with the CT going on, not only in football, but in boxing and hockey and, and all, the, all the different scientists and doctors trying to figure out ways to protect the player. And I look at the professional sports, and I look at basketball, I look at baseball, I look at hockey, I look at football. Those are the four top sports right now in all the professional sports. And then you go to UFC and boxing and all the, the different growth of sports. And, and boxing has been around for hundreds and hundreds of years, but MMA has really grown in the last 30 years. And the rules. You know, with baseball trying to tra uh, try to change the rules with... Uh, uh, the pitch clock. The pitch clock <laughs> in the back of the, you know, in the back of the mound, and and you talk about the rules that you have. Going to have robotic umpires calling strikes to balls. You have a three batter thing now. The three batter, you know, situation. It, it, the rules, and then you go to the NFL. The rules where you can't you can't hit a quarterback lower. You can't hit a quarterback above their waist. You can't hit them below their knees. You got to hit them in a certain spot, or you're going to get a penalty, mm -hmm. or. Or defensive players not be able to to grab on to uh, an offensive player like a wide receiver within, in the open field anymore yard, yeah. with the different style of game and how the NFL wants to open up the game and the offense. There is no two-line pass in hockey anymore. The goal nets are bigger and the pads are bigger and the new equipment is completely changed because they thought the speed of the game would change and it will be more goal scoring, which it hasn't been. And then you go with... Um, basketball with the rules that basketball has that they brought the the three point line a little bit in years and years ago and and now you, you you look at it you know the game is completely changed now the only way you could be successful in the NBA is shooting three point shots and and that's how the game is transitioned there's no more uh Michael Jordan style of games anymore where People can dominate the game in all different ways of the game. It's it's one way or another. You want to be the superstar really the the charm of the league, and, and you see with LeBron James and what LeBron James has done, and he's not even a three-point shooter, but he transitioned the game and he changed the game. Now, now three superstars can want to play together to be champion. You, the only way you can win championships is if, if two or three superstars join forces in the NBA. I saw something a while ago, too, where I think they were tracking all the shot charts made throughout the season. I think only 5% of shots taken throughout the entire league was mid-range shots now. So it's either you go you go to the foul line or you make a layup or dunk or you shoot a three now. <laughs> Is this good for professional sports? And I, I know a lot of people want to argue these points till they're dead in the ground. And I know the game has transitioned and the game has completely changed in all professional sports because of it. Because of the way the game has transitioned, the sports have changed. And that means fans have changed. I, I understand how the new millennials... They follow players. They don't follow teams anymore, which hurts the game. It really does. It hurts the game. It doesn't hurt the player. It doesn't hurt their their product, their brand. As you know, LeBron James with uh, LeBron James Media and and what he does not only on the on the court but off the court. You you talk about Tom Brady, who now is starting to transition his his worth and, and his brand to the world because he's forty three years old and his his game is completely almost over. You know so. You look at all these superstar players start and starting to tra transition the game by building brands, as you know, with sneaker endorsements and jersey endorsements. But the NBA and the NHL and the NFL are still trying to find ways to make the game better. And is this making the game better by changing rules that have affected not only players, but organizations and the growth of the game, not only in this country, but throughout the world? Does that help the game? Has it helped the game? And I, to my, to my understanding of what sports are, the games and the rules should not have changed. 
They've only should have gotten better. Now, I understand the CT uh, epidemic and, and all the different situations that we look at as the game has changed with the hits and the different helmets that they use and the different body body shoulder pads and and, hand, and gloves and all the different things. As you know, with the NFL, they use these now gloves. These wide receivers use these mm-hmm. gloves that actually the ball sticks. It's like a magnetic thing that sticks to their hands. That, <laughs> like Odell Beckham catching the ball with one hand. It makes it easier for them to grip the ball that NFL players did not have in the 80s, in the 70s, in the 60s, where I believe the wide receivers were better and more athletic and had better opportunities. And I'm not talking about speed-wise because the athleticism has gotten better in professional sports, but the game, the speed of the game has changed. Who's to say that the players like Jerry Rice and Joe Montana couldn't have fit in the game like a glove like they did in the 80s and the 90s? Jerry Rice might get 3,000 yards in today's game. So does the rules, the change of rules, help the game of football, baseball, hockey, basketball? And the answer is no, it doesn't. What it does is it opens up endorsements. It opens up opportunities for the game to grow in their eyes, by changing the different rules or changing the game for the better. It has not helped the game. It's making the game worse. Worse to watch, worse to communicate with your friends about because there's really nothing to talk about. What are you going to talk about? You're going to, work, you're going to talk about the bad call that the referee had in the fourth quarter instead of the whole, the whole game because you're worried about the rules and the rule changing and, and, and really what affects the game as a whole. You don't care about... What happened in the game? Because the truth is, your team lost the game because of a da- a bad play call. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of fans will blame the refs because of that. And and I think that's the transition of the game and the way the change the change of the game has really hurt the game of professional sports. And how you you talk about the coronavirus and how they've canceled sports as a whole. Does this help? Better, does this help sports when it comes back? It absolutely does. The only problem with this is right now is. We haven't been away from sports this long as an, a community or as an organization, as a, as a state or a country in forever. Since, since ni- World War II. Since yeah. 1939. Mm-hmm. So you, you think about it now as a whole. Do you miss sports enough to know that when the rules and everybody complains about the rules and, and really the growth of the game because of the CBAs and the new charges that you have to pay to go and see those games and see those players, is it worth spending the money – and going out there and watching your teams play when the truth is it's really all about the player now. Mm, it's not about the team. In the NBA, yeah. It's yeah. not about the team. It's it's in every sport. It's not just the NBA. It's a lot of it. It's it's a lot of it is the NBA. I'm just saying, you're right. It's happening in all sports, too. I'm just saying I think it's the biggest one in terms of a player league. Like they'll follow the player wherever they go kind of thing. I think this is a huge problem and I think not just the NBA and the NFL and and all the sports, even College sports, the NCAA, the NCAA, they they all have to figure out what the game needs to do for it to grow, then transition the way the rules are changing the game and ruining the game as a whole. Because I'll tell you this right now, as a baseball fan, I don't want to see a machine calling strikes oh God. behind the mound. I mean, behind the uh, behind behind the catcher. I don't want to see that. You know why? Because it changes the, the game, the way the game is played, the way uh, the managers are going to call uh, a, a hit and run or mm. uh, call a play or call call a, a, an outfielder to come in to catch the ball because you don't know if it's going to be a pop-up or a home run or tr- somebody trying to drive the ball. These are all things that have changed the game. And it hasn't changed the game for the good. It's changed the, ba- the game for the bad. And I think the rule changes have affected sports. Not benefited for the sports. Yeah, it's benefited through the CBAs and, and the growth of what you know what the millennials want to see. They want to see more points on the board. But because they play these fantasy games and fantasy has completely changed everything right. in professional sports. There's no defensive players in fantasy unless you do very advanced leagues. Yeah, and I, I think that's a huge problem because I think defense is the most important position to play if you want to be a championship well-renowned team. And, I, and I'll tell you this right now. Say what you want about the, the Bill Belichick New England Patriots the last 20 years. 
The reason why they were so good all those years wasn't their offense. It was their timely defense in certain games. Figuring things out. How to shut down the best wide receiver, the best mm-hmm. tight end in the game, the best running back, the best player on the field. That is defensive calling. That's a defensive lot play against calling. Against a lot of top offenses, too, in those years. The Eagles, obviously the Rams, obviously they cheated for that one, but they still held, even if they didn't, they probably still would have held them under 30 points. Obviously, uh, Atlanta, Philly wasn't as much, and then the Rams recently. A lot of those were top offenses that were in there, and the Patriots just, the way they build their team, just figured that kind of thing out. Even though their stars, their bigger names, were more on offense. Absolutely. But I think the game, the transition of the game, has really changed the growth of the sports. And then we talk about the growth of women coming into professional sports with men. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you this right now. You're seeing women coaches coming up in the NFL. You're seeing women coaches coming up in the NBA. Eventually, women coaches are going to take over in professional sports. Say what you want. There will be two or three women in professional basketball coaching different organizations. You're going to see two or three, possibly four women eventually taking over in the NFL and coaching in the NFL. Now, how long do you think it'll take for them to become head coaches, you think? Because right, as of right now, they're all assistant coaches. The Cardinals were the first one to do it, and then it was Buffalo, I think, Tampa. Actually, the Jets were the first one. Oh, they were? Yes. I thought it was Arizona. Okay. It was the Jets. All right, so it was the Jets, then Arizona. Mm-hmm. And that, obviously, the Niners have one now, then they just went to the Super Bowl. So that could help the leverage of that. So again... Right now, they're assistant coaches. They're mostly offensive assistants or defensive assistants. They have a particular specialty. Would that take them a while to get to head coaches? Is it still another decade away kind of thing? I No, I don't think it's a decade away. I think it's a couple of years away. I think you're going to see an NBA uh, coach very, very soon in the NBA. I think they're, they're getting interviewed already. Women are getting interviewed, and I think they deserve it. I don't care what they are. I don't care what color you are, what ethnic group you are, what religion you are, or what sex you are. If you're a good coach, you should have the opportunity to coach. It doesn't matter. I think that the NBA and the transition of the game, you're going to see NBA players, NBA girl players with playing with men mm-hmm. on the same court with men. There are great women basketball players right now in the WNBA that could shoot just as good as the men. Just as good as the men. You watch them on NBA All-Star Weekend when they do that, that competition with some of the men NBA players. You see it? They're the best players on the court. Mm-hmm. And yes, women are not as strong. Not Maybe, I wouldn't say they're not as fast, but there are women that are just as fast as the men, but maybe not as athletic as the men are. But women are out there right now. There are women just as talented and have the ability to get on the court and compete with the men. And eventually, NBA owners and NBA GMs are going to see that. NFL, and I know everybody's going to say, why would a, why would the NFL let a woman a woman player play with these big bohemets, these 330 pound guys? And I'll tell you this right now, there are positions right now in the NFL that women can absolutely play. There you're telling me you're telling me a woman can't be a quarterback in the NFL? There was a a college recruit that got a scholarship. I forget which school it was. It was a smaller school, but she was a safety and she just got recruited this year. You're going to tell me that women can't play the quarterback position in the NFL if they're protected? How about a kicker? A punt kicker? A field goal kicker? There are so many positions in the NFL that you don't need to have full contact. And yes, you're going to say, well, quarterback position is full contact. Absolutely. How many times a quarterback get, an average quarterback get hit in a game? 10, 11, 12 times? Depends on the level of your offensive yeah. line. Exactly. So if you build the offensive line, you bring in a, a woman that can throw the ball 50, 60 yards, what is the difference if it's a girl or a guy? Mm-hmm. It's Just all about like skills now in any sport. It's all about judging the skill set. In hockey, it's all about stick skills and puck possession. NBA, it's all about if you can shoot now. It's not really as much of how big you are, how agile you are just in that immediate it's all about those little skills that make it work so that's why i think they can even if they have a a size disadvantage or like you were saying a strength disadvantage it it can make it work where that could work in particular positions like i said earlier there's a recruit for a safety right now so again she has the athleticism for that that you have to move around that needs speed that needs tackling ability for that and eventually you'll see it evolve you're right it'll probably start with more kickers punters and quarterbacks stuff like that but don't be surprised if it keeps going further to more speed positions too. i think it helps the game i think it's going to bring in more fans more females and will bring in the game for the better and everybody keeps thinking well the change of the rules 
No. Change of different opportunities out there for the women. Women are trying to go overseas to play professional basketball because the WNBA doesn't pay throughout the whole season. They only play th- during the summertime. So they're not making any money. They have to go overseas to Europe and Spain and Portugal and China to make money when they could be doing it here in the NBA, mm-hmm. even on the bench. They're the 12th to 13th <laughs> guy on the bench is making 4 or $5 million in the NBA. They never see the court. When some of these women... I'm not better than these NBA players. Let's be honest. Some of these women basketball players are way better shooter than the NBA players. <laughs> so, I, again, I, it's not too far back, and I think that the NBA is going to figure that out just as much as they. I think they figured it out now as far as coaching in the NFL and the NBA. So I think you're going to see it. I think the transition, and I remember when I was a kid, the first NH, NHL goaltender was a girl, and she played for the Tampa Bay, uh, Tampa Bay Lightning. And she, was she a good NBA, NHL player? No, she wasn't a great NHL player. And she only played, like, I think she only played two NHL games. But she had to be good enough to make it and be drafted by the Tampa Bay, uh, Tampa Bay Lightning. So, all right, we have our second caller of the day. You guys know him as Jeff. I know him as the Boat Sinker. What's going on, Jeff? Dude, you guys are insane if you guys think women are going to be in men's sports. I do think that in certain sports eventually, especially in football, because there are positions that you can play as a woman, and and in the NBA too, there are a lot of great WNBA players that can shoot as good or better than NBA players, guy NBA players. Look, by by no means am I being misogynistic. I know you're not. Or saying that they shouldn't do it or whatever. But it's been tried. Right, Mano Mayom couldn't make it playing goalie in hockey. That's the least physical of the positions. It just requires quickness and hand-eye coordination, and but she couldn't make it. The, the The men's game is too fast for her. Right, uh, they tried it in golf. Annika Sorenstam couldn't couldn't keep up. She was the best in the world as a female. Right, she couldn't keep up. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. the top men. For whatever reason, and you know, I'm not being misogynist, they're just too much bigger, faster, stronger, more physical than the women. You're not going to see them playing men's sports. You're, you're not. You're gonna tell. You're telling me right now. There's not going to be a woman that's going to come out there that's as athletic as a man is in in one of these sports that's going to get an opportunity that will be able to compete with the men on a basketball court or on a football field. There are women out there, Jeff. Say what you want and I'm I'm not Listen, saying that you're sexist. I'm, I'm not I'm, saying I'm, that I'm a big I'm a big fan of some of the women that play basketball. I know you do. I, I, I know you are. Bri- Brianna Stewart at at UConn and and you know Maya Moore and Shamika Holstar and all these great women that have played. I am not by any means saying that they're not good or anything. Dude, there's zero chance that Brianna Stewart, who might be the best woman in the WNBA, would you disagree with that? She's right mm-hmm. there, yeah. Mm-hmm. She's right there. there. There's zero chance she could keep up with the men. Zero. Yeah, but she could. You're telling me right now that when you look at Maya Moore, who is a great basketball player, you're telling me right now. Terrific. You're telling me right now that she couldn't play. She can't come off the bench in the NBA in an NBA game and score seven or eight points and be worth her while playing in the NBA. No, I think no. she could. There's, I think she can. So many quality. There's so many quality people. Like think about how many, how good like the NBA is. Like, dude, what's an NBA team? Sixteen people. Mm-hmm. Eighteen people. What's it like, dude? And a lot of these guys. Actually, it's thirteen people. And- it's thirteen people. No, it's more than thirteen. People. I think it, no, I think it's fifteen. I think it's thirteen or fourteen on the bench, if I'm not mistaken. It's, it's no, the whole team, five starters. There's at least two rotations. That's ten. Seventeen. There's probably another five. Guys seventeen players. Players. Seventeen. Seventeen. It really, it's, it's fifteen or sixteen or something. No, it's seventeen. He, he looked it up. It's seventeen. Okay, so mm-hmm. then there you go. Mm-hmm. Right there's there's so many good players coming in all the time. There's there's no chance that they would take. A roster spot there. There's no chance. Hmm. Well, you don't think tried, though with did, shooting did ability did, because did of players getting smaller. Hockey? They tried it in hockey a long time ago in the '90s, Jeff, and and I think it was the wrong time to bring in a female goaltender who was good. She was good, and I remember uh, I forget her name is uh, Manon Rion. Ma- Manon Rion, yes, and she was she played for the Tampa Bay uh, Lightning. She was drafted by the Lightning. 
She played, I think, two NHL games, and she was not not any good. But I, I don't think she was the best female goaltender they could have picked to play the position coming into the NHL. I thought that was just really a selling standpoint for the NHL to try to bring in more females to watch uh, an expansion team really take off. And I, I thought it was the wrong wrong time, wrong place, and the wrong player to bring into the NHL at the time they did. No, I actually think it was probably – I mean, maybe it was the wrong player. I don't think the timing was bad, though, just because I don't think there's ever a wrong time to give anyone a shot. If you think that they're deserving, give them a shot. Like, man, woman, whatever, I don't care. You know, I, you, you got to start somewhere, right? So I don't think the timing was bad, but it's just maybe it was the wrong player. That's fine. But how can you argue that in golf? You can't. Arthur Sorenstein was the number one ranked woman in the world, and they had to handpick the golf course for her to play in, which at the time was the shortest one they played on the PGA Tour, and she couldn't make the cut. The number one women's player in the world couldn't keep up on the shortest golf course. Well, was it so because of her driving ability? Schedule and they were get, going to get into longer golf courses, she would never be able to keep up. Well, are you talking about her driving ability or her her uh, short game? It's, it, no, 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 no. It's It's... It's the whole game, dude. When you're when you're playing an event, it's the whole game. And because they don't hit it as far, and because they're stretching out these golf courses, she'd never be able to have a scoring average low enough to make cuts. She wouldn't. Uh-huh. When when you'd be when she would be hitting three woods and hybrids into every freaking green, and the men would be hitting you know eight irons, nine irons, and wedges, she would never make enough birdies to keep up. She right. wouldn't. Hmm. It's very interesting, Jeff. It's very interesting. Jeff, we got to go to a quick break. We're going to be doing debate hour. Stay in tuned. If you want to call back, you're more than welcome to. I'm, uh, I'm actually excited that, uh, you know, this virus has shut down all the Cowboys fans. We don't have to hear them whining about <laughs> Trent Frederick retiring today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're, they're, losing, they're losing a lot of players from retirement. They're, they're just falling off the... The grid. Yeah, this that's is the... the only positive out of this virus. It's like all the Cowboys fans have gone into hiding. <laughs> oh, Jeff. Looking at you, bees. <laughs> Looking at you. <laughs> Idiot. He's so dumb. <laughs> oh, so amazing. Ah, uh, Jeff. All right, Jeff. Thanks for calling, my friend. All right, Speedy. You suck. <laughs> Jeff from Tampa, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, when we come back, debate hour here at the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. It, it is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Be fearless at MMA Long Island and Seituha Karate. Located at 28 Cold Court in Ronkonkoma, MMA Long Island is the martial arts school for you if you want to learn combat-proven techniques, build confidence, discipline, and self-esteem while learning real martial arts to fight back against bullies, predators, and peer pressure. MMA Long Island offers group and private lessons for all ages and levels in traditional Goji-Ru Karate, MMA, and self-defense. MMA Long Island is one of Long Island's most affordable martial arts schools. There are no promotion, belt, or membership fees, and family discounts are available. All classes are taught by 7th degree black belt Sensei John Benedict with over 30 years teaching experience. So whether you want to get in the ring or protect yourself and your family, MMA Long Island can help you reach your goals. Visit MMALongIsland.com. That's MMALongIsland.com or call or text 516-381-9660. That's 516-381-9660. Of course my kid's in the right car seat. Well, I think he is. Yeah, my kid's in a booster seat. He was ready to move up. He is ready, right? Her car seat looks like the right size. There are probably rules on when to move up to a booster seat. Aren't there? Rear facing, forward facing. I think I have it right. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Are your children in the right car seat for their age and size? Don't think you know. Know you know. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat. I know my child's in the right car seat. Or else I wouldn't get in the driver's seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. 
You don't usually get a stock tip from a 16-year-old, but I'm here to tell you about a different kind of stock. It's called Better Futures, a stock for social change that's not about making money. Instead, you invest to help students like me go to college. This is beyond a simple donation. It's the opportunity for America to invest in its kids and take an active stake in the future of the country. The return on your investment isn't money. What you get back is knowing you protected our potential. So one day, that potential can grow up to become surgeons and architects, executives and engineers, people who can change the future just by being a part of it. My name is Alicia, and I am your dividend. Invest in better futures with UNCF. Visit uncf.org slash invest. A mind is a terrible thing to waste, but a wonderful thing to invest in. A public service announcement brought to you by UNCF and the Ad Council. This is Namdi Asamoah. I play football for the Philadelphia Eagles, but what I do off the field with United Way might be more important. I'm a volunteer tutor and mentor. Why? Because over a million kids a year drop out of school, and that's not okay. It takes 12 years to create a graduate, but it takes about the same time to create a dropout. And the difference between a child becoming one or the other could be me, or it could be you. Studies show that if we get to these kids earlier, their chances are better, and kids who read well by third grade are more likely to graduate. So join me in United Way. Suit up and take the pledge. Become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor. Because when a child succeeds, we all succeed. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Take the pledge at unitedway.org. Brought to you by United Way, the Ad Council, and the National Football League. They'll challenge your authority. They'll try to break your will. They'll push you to the edge of your sanity. Because that's what kids do. But this car is your territory, not theirs. Defend it. Who makes the payments? Who cleans it? Who drives it? You do. That's who. And in here, your word is law. So when you say you won't move until everyone's buckled up, you won't budge an inch until you hear that click. Never give up until they buckle up. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. For more information, visit safercar.gov slash kids buckle up. Let's go inside the mind of a 10-year-old. I should have worn those earrings today. I like those earrings. Gabby has those awesome earrings. I need to ask her where she got those, but that's just what she would want me to do. I'll have Michaela ask her for me. Buckle up, Sarah. Yeah, but then Michaela will be like, why don't you just ask her yourself? That's just like Michaela. Sarah, buckle up. Michaela's such a great name. I wish I was called Michaela. There's like a dozen Sarahs in my class. Hey, we're not hitting the road until you buckle up, honey. Oh, yeah. Seatbelt. I forget sometimes because my brain is like busy, you know? I wonder if there's pizza at school today. Sometimes it can be tough to get through to your kids, but it's not impossible. Always make sure they're wearing their seatbelts, even on short drives. Remember, you have the keys, you have the power. Never give up until they buckle up. A message from the National Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Visit safercar.gov slash kidsbuckleup for more information. Hi, this is Terry Crews, actor, former football player, game show host, father of five, and all-around big dude. I'm also an expert on drama. I know all kinds of drama. There's the good kind that comes with having a house full of kids. There's the bad kind like season-ending injuries. There's the necessary kind like having an agent in Hollywood. And there's silly drama like the drama around my percolating pectorals. And then there's the drama you can skip. Skip the drama that comes with not having your high school diploma or equivalency. Find free adult education classes near you and finish your high school diploma. Visit finishyourdiploma.org. Or text DIPLOMA to 97779. Message and data rates may apply. Reply STOP to opt out. That's DIPLOMA to 97779. And leave the drama to actors like me. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ed Council.
Adopt US Kids presents multiple choice parenting. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? How could he do this to you? And for Sheila, she, she has split ends. B, console her. Oh, sweetie, this is going to happen a lot. Four, maybe five more times before you get married. C, take charge. Got to get this all straightened out. Keep a little talking to, man to man, mano a mano. Hey, Steve. Is now a good time? No? Okay, no problem. Bye. Or D, help her find a new boyfriend. I know a great place to meet boys. The internet. Nice, single boys. Never mind. How about some ice cream? As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on how you can adopt, visit adoptuskids.org. A public service announcement from the US Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids and the Ad Council. You you you're listening to the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Little Lenny Kravitz, baby. Six three one nine seven one eight zero seven zero. As you guys know, this is Down to the Wire. I'm your host, Errol Marks. Every single Monday and Tuesday from six p.m. to eight p.m. at night, my co-host, Speedy Petey, the big vibrating champion. Oh God, Speedy Petey, vibrating champion. The vibrating champion. Yes, oh, the champion for all champions. Our Speedy Petey is sitting right next to us as we speak. Thank you for uh, coming in on time, and it's not because Corona with a lime. So. Uh, anyways, we have a lot to talk about for the rest of the show, and as you know, this is the part of the show that everybody looks forward to, and we know it as... Debate Hour. Here we go. This is the Debate Hour. And now, in this corner, your host, Errol Mars. And in this corner, who gives a shit? Round one. All right, Speedy, give it to me. Alrighty, round one. Oops. Round two. Oh, are we going to round two already? No, we're, we're not. Round one. We're going to round one. Oh, which figures. which NFL player would you compare most in today's game to Lawrence Taylor? Aaron Donald or Khalil Mack? Go ahead, Speed. Alrighty, so I'm going to take Khalil Mack in this instance. I mean, I, I, just the positional fit is just too obvious. It's but not about the position. It's about the player and, and what he does right. out on the defensive line. Right. Like, but again, Lawrence Taylor did. Right, I understand that. But I'm, I'm saying in terms of similarities, in terms of how they got to the quarterback, I think it's very similar. Both are versatile guys. Lawrence Taylor could line up in a lot of different spots and rush the passer. He was intimidating no matter where he came from. The same thing with Khalil Mack. He can move around. He's a very good at hybrid defenses. When Jack Del Rio was coaching there, he was he's best as an outside linebacker, but he can play defensive end. He can move around. He's been in both the 4-3 and the 3-4, and he's done very well in that. He made a Pro Bowl at two different positions. And again, Lawrence Taylor, while he never did that, he was dominant pretty much everywhere you could put him. He could, he could A-gap blitz. He could blitz from the outside. He could line up as a defensive end. There's a lot of different things. And again, both were very fast and explosive to the outside. Aaron Donald is fast for his size. There's no doubt about that. He's very fast for a guy who's 300 pounds, a little over 300 pounds. But again, Khalil Mack is just fast, period, explosive, period, like Lawrence Taylor was. I think it's just a, a more direct comparison. Both have great moves in terms of a variety of moves. Not that Aaron Donald doesn't. He absolutely does. But in terms of, again, where they played, how they get to the quarterback, I think Khalil Mack is definitely a more direct comparison than Aaron Donald. It's Aaron Donald. Just because of the pure dominance at the line of scrimmage, when he's in the game, it changes everything for the Rams, defensively and even offensively for teams to plan against the L.A. Rams. Now, six years, 72 sacks. He's been the most dominant defensive lineman in football for the last six years. When you look at Lawrence Taylor and what Lawrence Taylor did his first six years, Aaron Donald, you can argue, has had a better first six years than even Lawrence Taylor. The game was different, the speed was different, and, and really the rules were different. So obviously, advantage goes to Lawrence Taylor because of what Lawrence Taylor could do with any kind of rules in the game. And just his just elite presence on the field. 
But what Aaron Donald's done really for the Rams and really the growth of what this defense has and has been since he's come into league has been extraordinary. And and to me, it has nothing to do with the coaches because you've seen the, the great defensive coordinators and the defensive minds that have been over there. One of them play, actually is the defensive coordinator for the Jets and the other one who's just left them, Wade Phillips, who who's practically one of them main reasons why they got to the Super Bowl about a couple of years ago. So I, I, I'll look at this and I'll argue the points over and over again. Who is more comparable to Lawrence Taylor? And the answer is definitely, and there is not even an argument. It is absolutely Aaron Donald because of the dominance of what he is when he's on the field, just like Lawrence Taylor. It changes the complete game when he is on the field. Khalil Mack, you can you can take Khalil, Khalil Mack out of the game. We've seen teams do that this year. You take Khalil Mack out of the game, you take the team out of the game. Aaron Donald changes everything at, at, at one side of the field to the other side of the field because of what he can do and how he can pressure the offensive lineman in the middle of the field. So it's Aaron Donald. All righty. Now we're on to round two. Round two. So staying with football, which quarterback will have more success in their first season with their new team? Tom Brady or Cam Newton, who, like Errol was saying earlier, probably going to be a free agent now with the Panthers bringing in the XFL kid and now bringing in Teddy Bridgewater. Cam Newton said to be a free agent. Now, again, there's a lot of unknowns to both of this. I'm going to take Tom Brady right now just because I know what situation he's in. Cam Newton has potential to be better because if he does sign with a good RPO type coach, he could definitely fit. The problem is a lot of those spots are already vacated where that kind of thing can happen. Again, I don't know where that would be at the moment because a lot of those quarterbacks are younger quarterbacks. So what we know with Tom Brady, who he has Bruce Arians, who I think is a very underrated coach. I think he's the best coach in the league right now who hasn't won a Super Bowl. He's worked well with quarterbacks in the past. He's worked well with older players in the past. And both with Arizona and with Indianapolis, he had success as a, as a head coach doing well with teams that were not overly talented when he first got there. Now, Arizona became more talented later because he drafted well and they had a lot of good coaching, But and they had talent too. But again, they weren't great when they got there. Indianapolis was one of the worst teams in football when he got there. That, that, that team was not good at all. So I trust him to be able to do that same kind of thing with Tampa. Now, again, it will be hard without a great offensive line, but again, his scheme with Arizona helped with bad offensive lines to succeed as well. So I could trust that to do it a little more than Cam Newton trying to do it with a bad offensive line, where he has had trouble staying healthy because of that. So again, it'll depend on when Cam, where Cam Newton goes. If he goes to a good RPO quarterback spot, it could be him. But since we know what it is right now with Tom Brady, with the weapons he has with Evans, Godwin, Brady, and Howard, and with Arians, I think right now it seems like I'm leaning right now towards Tom Brady. I'm not leaning anywhere, but if I were to lean to a team or a player, I would lean it towards Cam Newton. He's the younger quarterback. I do believe coming off this shoulder surgery and really how Carolina completely gave up on him is going to give him even more push to go where he wants to go and play the game that he wants to play. I think Cam Newton has a lot to prove. He's still a fairly young quarterback that can play in this league because of his strength and his ability and the mobile ability that he has. He can come back and be a dominant quarterback on one of these... Like you said, one of these RPO teams that can use him in so many ways more than one. I, I just think Cam Newton's the younger. And, and to me, as much as everybody says, well, you think Cam Newton's better than Brady? Maybe now. If, if, if Cam Newton is 100% healthy, he's a better quarterback now than Tom Brady is. You can argue your points. You can say whatever you want. I'm not saying he was a better quarterback or he is a better quarterback all around than Tom Brady. But I would rather the younger quarterback that can play in the game distinctively and do things that Tom Brady can't do in and out of the pocket. So I'm taking Cam Newton. All righty. Round three. We go to basketball now. If you were building a new NBA franchise, which player would you take the team for your team to build around in their prime? Larry Bird or Steph Curry? Now, I'm going to give you a challenge because I know you hate Steph Curry. I'm going to take Larry Bird at this. I'll make you fight for Steph Curry. I also think, though, too, it would be Larry Bird for the sole reason of I think the league is more evolving into big guys that can shoot now, too. The Warriors did it with the guards. We know the, the Splash Brothers. We know, we know all about them. But I think now these newer teams are doing it with bigger guys that can shoot threes, forwards that can shoot threes, big men that can shoot threes. And Larry Bird at six foot nine could shoot very well in, in terms of for his era, which was a tougher era to play, and we've discussed that many times. Uh, he was very great from 
right from the free throw line, which is much easier to get to the hoop now. We're saying Michael Jordan's going to score 50 points in today's NBA. Larry Bird would get to the line a lot in today's NBA. And he was an 88% free throw shooter in almost every season that he played in in the NBA. And again, I think in terms of the way the league has changed from where it was in the 80s, the 80s you had a lot of great players all together. Now you team up with somebody. He's also going to get a lot more opportunity, more touches on the ball too, which I think will help elevate his numbers as well. So I am going to take Larry Bird for this one. Now I would have taken Larry Bird, but of course you'd be a prick. (laughs) I'm giving you a challenge. You're going to give me Steph Curry, so I'll argue my points here. Steph Curry, to me, is not a top five point guard of all time. But what Steph Curry does better than everybody else in in history is efficiently hit three-point shots. And in the NBA, especially in the 90s, if there was a player of that magnitude, which there wasn't, and there were there were there were Stojakovic, there was other guys that could hit three-point shots and do the things that you see NBA players doing right now, but not as efficient as Steph Curry and what Steph Curry has done in the league in the last five or six years. Now, I think because of that, it could have changed the game in the 90s and the 80s. The game, the way you defend against those guys, the way you play against those guys, that could have changed everything for the game. And maybe the three-point shot would have been more included and more important for guys like Michael Jordan to really develop his game. So Steph Curry could have changed the game in that magnitude. Would I have taken Steph Curry over Larry Bird? Probably not because of leadership. I think Larry Bird was a better leader. But as far as talent is concerned, you can argue that Steph Curry is is as talent as Larry Bird in ways that Larry Bird was not good at. Larry Bird was a good ball handler, and he was he played point guard at certain aspects of the game at certain you know times of the game that they needed him to bring up the ball. But Steph Curry is the ball handler. He is the point guard. He is the guard. He's the guy that everybody depends on. Changes the offense for Golden State. You can see the difference when he's in the lineup and when he's not in the lineup. What their record is. So. If you want to argue that point, it would be Steph Curry. As far as all-around leadership, it would be Larry Bird. So my argument wouldn't be that who I would take. It's really who I would build my team around in in the particular time. So it would be Steph Curry if if I would argue that. All right, last one for today. We're going to go to baseball. If you were to take a pitcher in today's game, which pitcher would you take more likely over Tom Seaver? Jacob deGrom or Justin Verlander? So this is interesting because I think Seaver was more similar to Verlander, but I think in terms of deGrom's recent dominance, it's tough to to not go against him with Seaver being a great strikeout pitcher for his time, Jacob deGrom becoming a more strikeout pitcher for his time. It's definitely very interesting. And I think when you look at Seaver, what he did with the Mets as well, he, him and DeGrom were very similar. Both of them had trouble getting run support on a lot of bad teams. Tom Seaver still did very well in 69 and 70 and several other seasons when the Mets offense was good. But a lot of times when Seaver was pitching, it was when the Mets offense was putrid. They were still an expansion team. And Jacob DeGrom is going through very similar circumstances to that. So he would be, I think, used to that more. Verlander, he plays, again, I think the better pitcher in his prime than DeGrom was, at least for now. But... In terms of him getting the run support, I think that helped in terms of elevating his win totals. And again, I don't think the the innings that he would have to pitch would stretch as much in today's game. And Jacob DeGrom is still very efficient in doing that. Pitchers get pulled earlier now, so I think in terms of that, he would have more of the more able to in terms of getting the runs in within the seventh innings, getting your outs when you need to kind of thing. Where Tom Seaver, I think, could do that too if he could adjust today, today's game. But I think in terms of that, I, I would take DeGrom for that too. Even though in terms of the similarities between Seaver and Verlander, I think they're more similar to each other. But I think in terms of adjusting to that, in terms of who I would take in terms of adjusting to today's game, I would take DeGrom. It would be Justin Verlander. Look what Justin Verlander has done in the last three years with the the Astros. Now, the Astros were caught cheating, but Verlander's a pitcher. That's what he does. Right. He gets I, on the I don't mound. think the Astros cheating really affected the pitchers. No. The dominance of what Justin Verlander, 6, 21 and 9, 16 and 9, 5 and 0, 10 and 8, 15 and 8, 16 and 9, 5 and 8, 15 and 12, 13 and 12, 17 and 8. Go look at his whole career as a major league player. He's only had two losing seasons, and really the two losing seasons was 2008 and when they were really, really bad. Uh, when Detroit was really, really bad. And 2005, when he was a rookie. He was 0-2. I mean, this guy has been one of the most dominant pitchers in baseball for the last almost 15 years. Uh, His ability to go pitch in the playoffs, something that DeGrom has only done really once in his career. Really once. He played in two playoffs, but 
He's done it one year. This guy did it year in and year out for Detroit. He did it year in and year out for Houston. And he won a championship. And he was as good as any pitcher in baseball when he was doing it. So, and, and, and look at what he's done for the last couple of years. He was a Cy Young winner last year. And what he did last year at the age that he was. And, and look at it. Look at the Cy Youngs he should have won all these years. That he got robbed a couple of years ago where he, his own wife came out and said on, on social media. Right. Took shots at the <laughs> baseball union and all the, the people voting and all the, the writers voting. I just think what Justin Verlin has done as a starting pitcher has been so far and so long for what Jacob DeGrom has done. The dominance of Jacob DeGrom the last two years, there's no question he has been. He's also in the National League when... When Verlander's been doing it in the American League his whole career with against better batters, better hitters, better power, and have to face against the DH every single day, that's something Jacob Degrom has not done, and that's the difference. And I look at that as a big picture. Now Jacob Degrom, he's done it two years. Is he a Hall of Famer right now? He's not. Verlander, if he were to retire right now, he's a Hall of Famer. He's one of the best. Tom Seaver, when you try to compare Tom Seaver, one of the greatest pitchers of all time, to a pitcher, you can take Justin Verlander. You can take flip pitchers of that magnitude because Tom Seaver's a Hall of Famer. Justin Verlander is going to be a Hall of Famer. Jacob DeGrom is not a Hall of Famer, not yet, and we can't even predict that in the next three or four years until we see the dominance that we've seen in the last two years. So in my eyes, it is Justin Verlander. Mm -hmm. And that... Is our debate hour for today on Down to the Wire. You guys can watch the replay. As you know, me and Speedy argue our points. Tomorrow will be another edition of Debate Hour. We will have another guest tomorrow. I want to give a shout-out to Perry Williams, two-time Super Bowl champion, uh, keynote speaker for the New York Giants, uh, calling the show LIU. Uh, he's the director of the LIU program who is... Uh, he's been fantastic. It was a great interview. I really appreciate him joining us today on this edition of Down to the Wire. Uh, Speedy Petey is still far trying to figure out what color he wants to sell at the vibrating uh, <sighs> si you know, situation. So once we get the number and the color, we're going to start you know, pushing them out. And Speedy will be pushing out his, his product, his God. name, his brand of vibrators. <sighs> what are we going to call it? The Speed Sensation? Oh, God. Yeah, I'll try to Speedy get. Speedy sensation. I'll get rid of them all as fast as I can, so you don't have to talk about. No, them. no, 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 no. You can get rid of them. Yeah. <laughs> we got to see the color. We got to see the different uh, logos and slogans oh, that you're going to have on it, because I think it'll draw people more, and especially with you being a high price superstar, I think that will sell to the public. So God. I think it's going to be great for <sighs> us, and, and a great opportunity to watch Speedy in action and going out there and talking and selling products to people. And why not? It be the first product he ever sells, a vibrator. Oh, God. <laughs> what? You don't want to do it? Uh, it was supposed to be a simple thing, and now you've turned it into something more sophisticated. It is sophisticated. <laughs> it is great, and I think it'll be great for you. You get out there, you meet God. new people, and, and you'll make some money. You know, this is... This is something that you've been uh, dreaming about for a long, long time. Not Why really. not do it with the vibrator? <laughs> not really. The vibrator, oh, which gosh. I think is a great selling key for you, not only for women, but for men. Oh, God. What do you think? No. It wasn't supposed to be this sophisticated. It was supposed to be something to make a I little bit of money. I don't think it's sophisticated. I think it's going to make <laughs> You're you saying make all, all different colors, all different slogans. Yeah, well, but the colors. Promote yourself. <laughs> I think you need to. I think it'll be great for you, and it'll help the product out on what you're trying to sell. Why not do it the right way, Speedy? If you're going to do it, you're going to do it the right way. Am I right or wrong? God. Am I right I or wrong? I don't know. I don't know what I, I don't know what it is anymore. Come on, Speedy. You know exactly what it is. It's great for you, and it's great for the product. So as you know, you can reach Speedy by um, reaching out on our website by going to www.worldwidesportsradio.com. Shout out to Dan. He wrote a couple of new stories, uh, great stories. If you, if you like a good writer, you like good sports media, and good, uh, really a good blog writer, you go to Dan, Dan Radziki, who's uh, one of our executives, our guys that run our, our – uh, our blog writing, so you can check out Dan. Speedy wrote a story. It's a great story. You can check it out. Um, again, another person that can write for our network. Evan has a couple of new stories up on our website, so you can check out his stories too, and I'm going to start writing again as well. Um, we will be back tomorrow at 6 p.m. Uh, new show, new stories, new arguments, so stay tuned for that. Until tomorrow, this is Errol Marks and Speedy PD and Down to the Wire saying good night, and we'll talk to you then. Good night, everybody. You're, you're, you're listening to the World Wide.